by the power of Christmas. Look at that. That is smashing. Excuse the big belly. I'm just pumping up for Christmas. Um, Christmas special tonight with the Misfits. I am not DMing tonight. That is Matt plays Drago in our campaign. I am just a player. And I'm going to go and do my hair before the rest of them join in. Let's get on with it. <laughs> yep. Ooh. Okay. Morning. So <laughs> this Christmas time adventure takes place in a city called Varberg. And Varberg is in the north of a country where it's pretty cold anyway, but being near the northern coast, it is particularly cold. It's like a nipple freezing temperature, even indoors. The six, I'm not used to a group of six. The six of you have been a traveling party for some time. You've uh, been on a few adventures. You've gotten to know each other quite well. You're not on kind of mother's maiden name terms, but you know each other well enough to know that you can trust each other. And you've somehow managed to find your way to this town, which is quite humble, quite rustic, very kind of bare bones. There's uh, probably a total of just over a dozen buildings that make up this town, probably a population of about 50 people, pretty small in general. You uh, find yourself entering the town at night. So it's very dark outside. The only light is really from the inside of the buildings of this town. And from what you can hear as you make your way into the town, it's quite a raucous place. As little people as there are, it still seems like they know how to have a good time. And we find ourselves in the middle of a holiday called the Yule time, which is kind of their equivalent of Christmas. So there's lots of decorations around the homes. There's wreaths on the doors. There are, um, you can take, you can kind of almost taste cinnamon in the air as you walk through the house, through the town and you find yourself the nearest inn. You enter inside and you can see that almost the whole town is inside. It's got a large fireplace at the far end of the inn and there's a big hearth in the middle of it. And as you enter, there's a large gentleman behind the bar, probably almost seven feet tall, very wide beard. And he kind of goes, hello, table four, six, is it? Do you have any room or space for six people? Oh, oh. yes, there's a booth in the back just over there. Well, He's my kind of... thumb's the size of two people, so you might need a table for seven. Well, I've got to say, darling, it's like it's been so nice <laughs> to see you. I've been waiting to do this for so long, and it's so nice to be sitting there. I'm going to have a table for six. Yes. I can't wait. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Don't worry about your bum, Mojo. It's going to be fine. Don't you My know? mouse cursor is hovering over the leaf button. Hey, then, I'm just a bit worried because <laughs> yeah. you know how easy my bum gets numb. But yeah, okay. Oh God, I forgot I was travelling with you lot. Oh, don't you be such a Grinch. Yeah. You oh, that's really beautiful. What's the matter I with love you? the commitment. <laughs> that's all I can say. That's terrifying. Jesus Christ. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh, that nightmare uh, before Christmas? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Honestly, I knew you guys would be so happy to see her. <laughs> happy no, not the commitment, not scary. The generous not words. the character. Oh, Fayed, you and me, we go back way far. Yes, Diggy, we have a history. I remember. Uh, yes. Yes, obviously, we've been traveling together, so, you know. I, 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 I understand who you are. That's what they call it, traveling or... Yes, nothing more, Biggie, nothing more. Biggie, why is it, though, wherever we go, there's always at least one man that you've got some sort of history with? You've got more history than uh, me. I am not going to go into that one. The National History Museum. Well, I've got to be honest with you, Mojo. Uh, I get about a bit. I'm not going to lie. But there's only one man that really stole my heart. And he's gone. Yes. And I miss him. Is that, why you, is that why you've got permanent bladder problems? 
Uh, traumatic a, stress. I think there's a time and a place for that kind of talk, mate. Thank you very much. It is a little personal. What? Just I don't there. know how you do it, but it, you know. Okay. Awkward. Anyway, I'm going to go into. So, what are we doing? Yes, we going inside so, or sorry. what? Dumb. Go inside or what? What are you lot doing? Yeah, let's go. In- oh shit, that's wrong character. Uh, <clears throat> yes, let's go inside. Oh yeah. Went into Brody. Damn. <laughs> so the six of you eventually find your way into a booth near the back of the inn, and um, Can you sweep this. A couple of extra stools are brought along for ample carriages if need be, and uh, the inn itself is bustling, thriving. You can see that there are lots of people inside. It's much larger on the inside than it looks from the outside as well. Lots of activity, lots of merriment, lots of alcohol kind of making its way around. Um, Just for the purposes of anyone who may not be familiar with some of these characters, because there are a couple of uh, recurring characters that are here tonight, a couple of new ones. If we go around and kind of if you don't have to do like a huge backstory just kind of introduce a character tell us what you're doing tell us what you're drinking in the inn um we'll go clockwise as i can see it so that would be ray seto so if you start there all right the name seto batox i am a mind <laughs> i am a minor minor fighter barbarian and weapon of choice is a battle axe that looks like a hand axe. Um, and he'll probably have like the basic mead. Mm-hmm. And is your middle name Kaiba Seto? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to try and butcher that name, so um, Jack, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. What's Stefan Subic? Attempt at a, a Christmas pun, anyway. Bro. My parents weren't very funny. Um, but I, I'm, <laughs> that, I'm, a, uh, I'm a tiefling druid, a rather tall, uh, slender uh, creature, um, and I'll be sitting in the pub today. Uh, I don't know how kind of copyright and monetization works on YouTube, uh, but I'd like a J2O if possible. Um, <laughs> that's all right. Um, but if not, I'll just have a, a stand sparkling water. I'm sure there's a um, Forgotten Realms equivalent of J2O, so that's cool. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fayed, Fayed. Yes, I, I am Fayed, Fayed of the al Fayed tribe, uh, Nom Rog, uh, in some parts of the world known as the Raven, uh, I like to kill people, I sneak up on people, I stab them in the eye, that sort of thing. Um, and I, I will have myself a cup of tea. Hmm. My joy. Yeah, uh, which camera are I looking in? Number two, 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 two. Hello, I'm Mojo. I am a delight, as you can see. And I'm very thankful for your hospitality on bringing me an extra chair so I can have one for each of my buttocks. Uh, which sounds a little bit like Seto Batox, doesn't it, really? Uh, anyway, uh, I got wet with a choice. I have a great axe given to me by my grandfather. Uh, he dead now. Um, and I have a shiny dagger that my brother Holgaf, don't know where he is, uh, uh, once stabbed me in one of my buttocks. He's got a scar. It's right there. Uh, but I better not show that because I think he gets a bit excited, you see, at the sight of man's buttocks. Um, but, yeah, so that's just me. Thank you. And I would like to have a strawberry milkshake, please, with marshmallows and the squirty cream on the top. Thank you. Nice. Oh, so Miss Mojo. <laughs> um, 3333. Uh, you all right? Dave, Dave Smith. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, um, having a, just chilling out, you know. Um, Basically here because uh, got caught stealing an apple uh, for community service. I had to shovel some shit and I didn't fancy doing it, so I ran away. Uh, just wield a sword, basically, just plain sword. 
and uh, I suppose I'll just have a water. What a miserable fuck. <laughs> I, I always say that I'm predictable with my fucking ridiculous characters. But here you go. It's fucking Dave Smith. You know, the guy is still ridiculous, just different. <laughs> He's just Fail. a Grinch. Yeah, I, I think you've only ever invented one character that I've legit ever fallen in love with. And don't hear anything of him anymore. Although I love Bob in a love hate relationship kind of way. Oh, I think I know which one you. Glondomir. Yeah, Glondomir. I love Glondomir. Uh, Glondomir was... was oh, yeah. Glondomir is my favourite. He was my hero. I've actually, <laughs> I've actually made a background now as well. It's hey. a short time since I joined. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, is it, it, it's only me left, right? Mm-hmm. OMG. So <laughs> the one the best nice. I'll tell you what. Good background. The name's Figgy, Figgy Pudding. Perfect for a Christmas special created last year. As an NPC, this is my first adventure. I can't wait to see you guys. I've been around the block, as you can tell. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to end up having so much fun with all of these lovely hunky men around me. Especially that one that's serving me to drink. He looks so sexy. Mm, um, come near me. Don't really have much of a background, I've got to be honest with you. But let's see if we can build one together. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's like a dating show. <laughs> it did sound like that, didn't it? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Look, right? This thing. <laughs> First time you guys met her, she owned a brothel. Let's just start with that. Did she? Yes, she did. She yeah, did. I'm, I'm, I'm record, betting she worked in there long before she even ran it. <laughs> she was the madam of a brothel called the Nutcracker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all coming back, yeah. And then she <laughs> was... The head of a fighting ring slash pub. Mm. As I said, yeah. as I said yeah. I've been around a bit, right? I've yeah. done plenty of stuff. So if you really want to go back, so I owned the brothel called the Nutcracker. I owned a, a pub called the Full Nelson, which was the, uh, the Half Nelson, which was a really nice place to go. And if you wanted to have a nice wrestle, I like a nice wrestle, especially with a big boy. It's a bit of fun. And um, I also Ooh. had a, a gold mine, which um, a big dragon took over, and these really nice guys came and rescued it, and I lost the love of my life. I can't wait to get him back. I'm going to find him again, I tell you. So basically, you are literally the head of all trades, master of head. Well, I can be around you tonight. <laughs> I've seen the thighs of your act and the way you swing it. That's a different kind of person. I need to sit somewhere else. <laughs> What, what are you drinking, Figgy? Well, my choice to drink, I mean, let, let's be honest with you, it's a fruit-based drink for the lady, right? But I ain't no fucking lady. So a pint of, <laughs> a pint of your best stout, please, darling. <laughs> I forgot to mention you're part of the Bahamaham Brigade as well. I was as well. Oh, my God, I was a smithy. Shit. So many jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so much history. I kept getting kicked out because I was checking the boss. <laughs> so eventually you get your drinks. They all come one by one. And you're sitting back, relaxing, taking in the inn, and uh, just kind of cooling your heels a little bit. It was a bit of a long walk to get to where you are now. And the weather wasn't great. It wasn't insufferable, but it certainly is near to below freezing. Wind started to pick up as you got nearer to town. So being somewhere that is a little bit warm is a nice relief. After a short while, you start to see that the place is full of very homely people, but very friendly people. As they kind of pass by, they kind of raise a mug to you. They kind of have very brief conversations just to see who you are passing by. And you start to get a feel for the place being very calm and relaxed. Or so you thought. Until, out of the blue, someone comes barging in the front door of the inn. And they scream, obviously I'm not going to scream because of what they said about my kid, but uh, they come in screaming, saying, he's back, Vada Yohad has returned. And as soon as they say that, everyone starts screaming and everyone starts panicking and they're running from one side of the inn to the other. And you can hear all sorts of bits and pieces of what people are saying. And you hear someone saying something like, 
what are we to do? What are we going to do? And then someone else says, what about the children? Go and check on the children. And then people are kind of going in and out of the air. And it's, it's complete chaos. It really is. And you start to kind of look around and you're not quite sure what's going on. But it's a complete polar opposite to what the place was like literally a few moments ago. And you start to see some people come from having left the inn, come back in, even more panicked, pale faced. And they say, the kinder, they are no longer here. What do we do? What do we do? And everyone starts to panic and panic. And then they all start to rush to this one table, which is just next to the hearth in the middle of the inn. And it's sat, uh, so three people are sat there. You have two that look very similar to each other, almost like twins, kind of late thirties, beard, a little bit graying, short black hair. And you have another person in between the two of them who is a little bit older, probably early sixties, much grayer beard, much bigger beard as well. And you can't quite hear what the people are saying, but they're all kind of approaching this man and they're all kind of panically asking him questions and, and asking him what to do until a point where he's holding this kind of big staff that he's got his hands rested on. He lifts it up some bangs on the wooden floor and it echoes and everyone is silent. And everyone stops for a second. And he kind of lets out a big sigh and says, you must leave this with me, my children. I will go and ponder what we can do. I know this is dark times, but please try and stay calm. And he stands with the other two and he walks off out of the inn. And even though everyone is calm for a moment, People start to kind of, once he leaves the building, start to kind of panic a little bit. And you can kind of hear bits and pieces of, of conversation where they're saying, how can we trust the mayor with something as big as this? We don't know what to do. How are we going to fix this? And then someone else kind of says, oh, Father Johan is back. It means that nobody is safe. We must leave. We must leave straight away. And you're not quite sure what's going on, but there's still a lot of this frantic, very quick but hushed talking in small groups of people. Couldn't you not trust a man who can slam a shelf down like that? I mean, I've never seen a man slam a shelf quite like that before. It makes me want to trust him. Um, no, not me. <laughs> You're just miserable. I'm not miserable, I'm just, you know, I'm gonna normal. Give you, I'm, gonna give you I'm just a realist, to be honest. No, I, you know, um, um, whoever is close panicking, I'll be like, I'll try and ask, like, what you know, what seems to be the problem as we are kind of outsiders here. What you There's ask, the bloke with the staff, the bloke with the staff's left. Yeah, um, well, we can't do that then, can we? <laughs> I'm just sort of standing there in the background with me milkshake, like getting up the last little bits. Like, <sighs> perhaps we should, perhaps we should ask the innkeeper uh, behind the bar. He might know, you know, what, what is going on. Yeah, that's a good idea. That yeah. Uh, I guess yeah. we we'll go over there, look up at this seven foot guy, giving the arm like three foot, and be like, "Hey, uh, hey, pal." Uh, Oh, shit, wrong accent. Again, uh, <clears throat> hello there, son. Uh, can you assist? With, uh, we, we would like to know why everyone is panicking. Did someone say Vada, Vada Johan is back? Father Johan? I did not hear it properly. Could you elaborate? He, he said Farta, yeah. Oh, Farta. Uh, yeah, I think that means Farta. Father Johan. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, something oh, like that. Uh, I'm I suppose, a yes. good one of them. <laughs> I'm a good Farta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this seven foot guy when this three foot gnome approaches at first he's kind of like oh hello and he kind of leans over the bar oh yes you are from not around here yes Vada Johan he is a terrible menace he is a monster he, uh, I, I, I do not know what to tell you but if you go across the road to the mayor he can fill you in on more information you are uh, and he kind of looks at the booth where the others are sitting. And he says, you are, you are adventurers, are you? You are you six? No, not really, mate, no. Oh, that is a shame. 
Well, I'm not anyway. I'm just, I'm just Dave. Dave, he's Dave. He, he, he's yeah. the adventurer. He really is, and he, 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 he can play a flute really well. Can I? You can. Oh, didn't know that. I feel like this is going somewhere dirty. Maybe he wants something to do with your you. Not everything well, I say is filth. No. Only yeah, nothing. right. He wants a bit of your. He wants a bit of your pudding there, Figgy. That might uh, lighten him up a little bit. <laughs> well, uh... Only real, only real men get to see my pudding. Let me tell you. Yeah, you stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've That's got just... enough. Put, you've got enough pudding for the both of us, darling. Right, because Figgy's <laughs> Figgy's a so <laughs> Figgy's a dwarf, right? Yes. Does she have a beard as well? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's <laughs> <laughs> basically what she looks like. <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. I'm going to have He's to gouge my me. eyes out in a minute. <laughs> All I got to say is, I am not a phase. I'm a, I'm a monitor. I've got hair everywhere. He's <laughs> got more hair on her face than I've got between my legs. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I do like oh, a nice God. shaved man. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, God. Yeah, that better. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're, we're heroes, yeah. Oh, thank let's, you. let's try not to wind up Mojo now, Figgy. Who would wind He's... him up? He asked me a question. All I did was answer it. You uh, know, he... man said I'm a, I'm a hero. <laughs> Heroes, yeah. yeah. Adventurer types, you're right. Yeah, I suppose we are yeah. now. Yeah. I've got to try and give away some sort of idea because I need a hero. I need a hero to the end of the night. Nice. I used to sing our karaoke, that. <laughs> no, we are heroes. We really are. I, I know we might come not come across it, but we really are. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I know that Fired Fired is pretty decent, you know. <laughs> You know, I already killed a dragon once. Oh yeah, I did. Yes, yeah, did yeah. You? yeah. Back in you back in the dragon. day, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the last hit. It was a lucky hit. Yeah. No, Whoa. I'm not having that, mate. No, not having yeah, that. yeah, for real, for real. No, yeah. no, come on, pull the other one. No, no, How no, did no it you do it? Oh, I just you know lose the bow, bow, arrow, eye, gone. One, one arrow. No, no never. One in a million. <laughs> One arrow. What was? He is, no, he's no. fired, fired the dragon slayer. That's what he is. That's what they call me. See, oh, I didn't know that. No. Mm. Traveling with what, you. But I, what, what I don't like to make a big thing, you know. It's it's, it's low stuff. Right. Really. But yes, yes, we're adventurers, yeah. heroes, uh, assassins, you warriors. Be, be bullshit. I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know. I'm just saying. What? <laughs> well, um, it seems like you are all a little bit confused, but if you feel like you are here as adventurers, then uh, perhaps the mayor could give you a little bit of guidance on what to do, because uh, Vadi Johan is something not to mess with. But if you are of stern stuff, then you may be able to help not just our town, but the other towns as well. So. If you wish to speak to him, he may be able to uh, to help you to help us. This dude is seven foot tall, right? Yes. Cool. <laughs> I walked up to him, right? Because oh, there he go past, <laughs> right? And I thought I'd stand there and I look up, right? <laughs> and I go, now look in my face, right? Do I look like somebody who's not stern? Do I? Do I look like somebody who's taken a lot of stuff in her time? Yeah, yeah, you painted a lot of stuff away, which might be why you walk a bit funny and you've got bladder problems. But you've had to scare me. What's with the bladder problems? <laughs> have you, have every, you got a bladder problem, Mojo? Every time I say, figure this, do a duet, let's do a little bit of uh, a duetting on the karaoke, a little bit of Sunny and Cher, you turn and go, oh, sorry, I've got to go for a way, early toilet. And you do it all the time. You've got to have bladder problems. Do you need to go to the toilet, Mojo? No. Okay, you I can go five for minutes, I went five minutes ago when Figgy turned around and said about she likes a shaven man. Right. I I had an accident. Accident. So you're all right then, yeah? 
Yeah, uh, right. Right. Need, right, great, yeah. We might need That's clean up on aisle two. Right. All right. Imagine that I'm enjoying winding Mojo up. I think we should really think about leaving this pub and like heading out and uh, doing some adventuring, guys. We're heroes. I uh, knock, not back my the mead and get get my shit ready while stretching. All right. Let's. Let's so, see what we have to do. I suppose I'd better do it in memory of uh, my old uncle John, John Smith. I used to sell that. I used to sell that in the Aft Nelson. No, he's a he's a bloke. One of my best sellers that was. He's a bloke. Yeah. She sold uh, him too. He used to adventure before me. I mean, we didn't really have a lot of blokes. I mean, not a lot of call for ball balls in the Nutcracker. No. <laughs> so you going outside? Yeah, let's, go, let's, 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 go, let's go, go outside. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let, yeah, let's go. Oh, fuck. Drop the Scotch accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, Brody. Let's go. <laughs> hey, yeah, we yeah, let's go, back. lads. Let's go on eight new. Oh, fuck. Um, I'm so glad yeah. it's not just me with the accents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's, I... let's go. Let, oh, I can't say it. It's just something else to all right, let's go! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that puddle started smelling a little bit. Let's go! Yeah, where are we going? Right, oh. Let's go, mate. It's that word I can't say. Where yeah. are we going? Go meet the old geezer and have just walked down. Oh, the the mayor of like Did you say he had a big wispy beard? He has a yeah, oh. fairly big, yeah. You know how much I love a guy with a beard. <laughs> right, and, and where is he compare. again? Where is this, where is this, this geezer? Well, so, right. you know, after he's he's outside. Right, come on in, let's go. Yay! I, in the excitement of man with beard with a big shaft that he slammed on the floor. <laughs> out of the door. So unstopper, <laughs> quick. No, you should quick, be all in right, all fairness, I am, I am fucking slow, so even if I was running, I wouldn't be getting anywhere. <laughs> I'm running on the spot, <laughs> <laughs> moving an inch every minute. <laughs> if, if, if I beat any of you, right, when it comes to rolling for initiative, you are all shit. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot. That is a lot of pressure. All right. Yeah, we. I think we go outside. Yeah, we're gonna make our <laughs> way to the Bloody cold day here. My nipples are freezing. We know it's cold outside. Yeah, let me put my Christmas hat, Christmas hat on first. There we go. Yeah, ooh, that's good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really can't stay, but baby, it's cold out. Oh. So, outside, um, the owner of the inn basically directed you to the mayor's house, which is pretty much almost directly opposite where the inn is. So it's very easy to find. Um, you enter out or you exit through the door into the town and you can still feel it's pretty cold but even in the hour or so that you've been in the inn it seems to have dropped a few degrees it's gotten a lot windier um, it seems quite bitter outside so as you leave through the inn you can feel the the bitter cold hit your cheek as you leave but luckily it is only a short walk to the mayor's house just across the road and you can see it's pretty obvious that it's his because it's the biggest house there it's Double the size, double the width, double the height of any other building there. Mm. Nice rack. Um, <laughs> Why am I not house, surprised? Knock on the door. And uh, it's one of those typical kind of in the door, you've got like a slidey thing where someone can look out and see who it is knocking on the door. Um, on that note, Bear with me two seconds. I just need to uh, let my wife in. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Here we go. Camario, <laughs> le numero uno. Put the glasses on. <laughs> Keep a low profile. Uh, that looks like you just got one big no, one. No, no, don't play with the nipples. Don't do it. No. <laughs> what are you doing? Stop. Uh, stop it. Stop it. No. Ooh. Oh, how oh. do you do that? Right. <laughs> So, 
thing slides open in the door. You see a pair of eyes. Oh, yeah. And they look scrutinizingly at the six here. And they say, yes, who is this? Dave. Hello. What business do you have here? Uh, guys, can uh, someone talk to this man? Um, yeah, let's try. Anyone other than Figgy, because uh, I'm aware she might scare him off. Okay, let's try. Who this. is it? Who, who are we looking for? Father? What? Father Johan is. We, we believe we <laughs> might be able to be of assistance, Mayor. You are the mayor, are you not? He looks. You can see his eyes kind of drift back into the inside. Of the house. Now. Not, not me, the mayor is here. I am his assistant. What do you mean you can help with Father Johan? What do your outsiders know of Father Johan? Well, we don't know anything. Almost That's why we have nothing. Farm and sold us, mate, and uh, he said to come speak to you if you needed help. I uh, think we're pretty handy. I think, yeah, I think, do we, do we all agree? Yeah, pretty handy. And, uh, all right. Yeah, well, especially that one. I can and, help. Uh, yeah, I reckon we can we can help you, mate. If if you're happy with that. What he kind of turns. Yeah. <laughs> he turns. You see the side of his head. He kind of you can hear mumbles between him and one or two other voices, and they're kind of going back and forth. And then he kind of shuts the thing for a few seconds. And then he starts to unlock the door and opens the door up and he keeps it just a crack open. And he says, you come in, you can talk to the mayor. And he opens the door and lets you all in one by one. Oh, bloody hell. I thought you were the mayor. All right. All right. Hey, Dave, guess mm. what? What's not the mayor. He's not the mayor. No, no, I know. Yeah. He you just found that out, Mojo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Buttock, man. He, he's, uh, he's, he's not the mayor. Well, no, he got Good to know. Thanks for the heads up, Mojo. Yeah, that's all right. I like to help when I can. Speaking of head up, with oh, that no. mayor again? Oh, no, leave it out. Well, <laughs> not the mayor. <laughs> As you're entering the house, um, you can see it's it's very large. It's very well decorated. There's lots of finery inside there, lots of um, expensive looking ornaments and very fine furniture. And it's a very open plan house. There's some stairs leading upstairs on the right hand side as you walk in, but inside it's a very large living area. And you have uh, the mayor sitting on the sofa in the middle of it, in front of a table, still with the staff kind of with his hands perched on top of it. And he looks very solemn and he has uh, one of the people that was with him on uh, his right hand side behind the sofa. And you can see as you go in that the person that opened the door was this other person that was with him in the inn previously. Um, and one by one, he kind of beckons you all to come in. And it's large enough that you all can find a, a chair or somewhere to sit. And once you've all taken a seat, the man at the door closes it, walks around behind the sofa to the other side of the mayor. And then finally the mayor speaks and he says, what is this you say about helping with Vada Johan? Well, your mate not tell him, tell you, sorry. Yeah, he tells right. me that you said that you can help, but what do you know of Vada Johan, you outsiders? You do not know well, the strife that we face against him. Well, we, rather than telling we, us what we don't know, why don't you tell us what we need to know? Well, no, hang on. We, we, we know his weak spot, don't we? Do, do we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Is, is that me? I ask. Well, I'm not, telling, I'm not saying it in front of these lot, otherwise they won't need us. Just, just so we can get a dice roll in, roll for persuasion on that. Yeah, <laughs> it's been it's been half First an hour. Or so let's do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got to look at modifiers. Hang on. Oh my god! That's Bob's cursed dice. Twenty four. Wow. Oh. <laughs> damn. Hmm. Damn. Well, then, oh, I'm damn. being persuaded that he knows something that I don't. <laughs> 
Was well, that really the actual the number he rolled? Because you want to trust a man who nicked an apple and shovel that, shit. That was a nut toy. Shovel shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the mayor kind of, you know, he he kind of thinks about it for a second, and internally he's kind of you can see he's kind of struggling with that for a moment because it's almost something that he doesn't believe himself, but he looks to you and says. Perhaps you do. You all look well-traveled and you all look like you have seen things that people from this town have never seen before. So I've seen things all right, darling. Perhaps yeah. you can help. Don't ask I will well I will tell I will tell you about Father Johan. Well, I will leave my it is too too much for this old man to tell. So I will leave my assistants to tell. This is Benny and this is Bjorn. And they will tell you exactly about Father Johan. Yes, <laughs> had to throw that in there. Um, Benny and Bjorn are very, they're, they're almost like identical twins. And they start to kind of regale you with this tale about this Vada Johan. And they kind of, every couple of sentences, exchange they swap over almost like in sync they know when the other one's going to stop and they say Vardy Johan is well you have no doubt heard of Father Christmas and the Krampus yes well roughly yeah the father yeah. of Christmas and the Krampus is not that dissimilar to what we have here except Vardy Johan makes the Krampus looks like the bunny of Easter Okay. Oh, no. Every year, Vada Johan rises from the river Glockenspiel and he takes the children <laughs> from the town on the eve of the Yule time. We must appease the Mongoose King with el with eggs on the window. <laughs> None of you have seen <laughs> I just this is brilliant. we have a clue where this is from. So this is gonna make it even funnier. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> this is so brilliant that it's both our DM. Uh, I was really hoping one of you would get this. <laughs> Keep going. Go on. <laughs> Go on. I love this. I love uh, it. Father Johan comes on the eve of the Yule time, and we have to try and appease them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> take... Yes. Oh, I think we need to take a break. Uh, <laughs> we have to try and appease the Mongoose King. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, love this dear. too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go on. With the eggs that we leave on the windowsill. Vadi Johan, he comes at the night time and he rises from the river and he lives in a castle of children's bones. <laughs> <laughs> and he has to come each night on the eve of the old time to take the children from the towns. And he does not care whether they are naughty or nice because children's bones taste the same to him. He is a terrible menace. He has the body of a walrus. He has the sharp teeth of a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I love this too much. Did you make this story up like with Bottles of the Dice? No, Jonheim, no. Jonheim sounds naughty. No. Is this from Big Mouth? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I did some quick Googling just to get some background. Yes. <laughs> he has the body of a walrus. He has the sharp teeth of a dolphin. And he has the many legs of countless crabs. And you know he's coming because he smells... <sighs> he smells of black licorice and cod. And when you smell that smell, you know you must hide your children. He plays a, fr a flute made of children's bones. 
<laughs> to try <laughs> okay to try and lure them to his castle under the sea and it seems like he has come again every year Vardy Johan <laughs> and the mongoose king <laughs> they they have a fight and the winner is the one <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's just so easy. He's trying to restrain himself. Broken himself. <laughs> oh, dear. I love it too oh. much. Okay. Uh, you can tell I did this for myself more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Uh, the winner of the fight gets to claim the children, and the loser gets turned into cream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> It seems that the, Mong the mongoose king has lost. <laughs> sadly, sadly, the mongoose king, he is cream. I can't, I'm sorry. I cannot stand the sight of the mongoose king turning into cream. But it seems like that has happened and Father Johan has claimed the children. And we do uh not have the strength to get him back. If you are truly adventurers and you feel like you can venture to take on Vardy Johan, then it is your choice. But he is very dangerous and he is very cunning. So it is up to you. We cannot make you, but if you feel like you have the strength to save our children, then please help us in our time of need. Now let me try and get this straight, right? Because I'll be honest with you, between all the giggling and the crying, I didn't quite get it. Yeah, so I'm not sure why mongoose... you were laughing at that. It was the mongoose getting the mongoose getting turned into cream, right? Now there's no, nothing like and nothing funny about a mongoose getting turned into cream. And he lost to this 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 father Johan, right? Cool. Who plays on children's bones. No, he eats the children's bones. Right. He lives in a castle made of children's bones. And he blows on And flute. he lures the children with a flute made of children's bones. Right. So, so he plays on the flute to lure the children to eat their bones. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, I think I've got something here. Or to use them somehow. Just uh, what, one question about the old uh, mongoose king. Um, he does give That's the hard. children back to the... The town, yeah? Is that, is that right? Yes, you see, every, every yeah. year they have a dance-off and they have to prove that they have swag and drip. <laughs> and it's the one that has the most that wins. And the loser, he turns to cream for a year. Right. And the mongoose king is very strong and he has won every year, but it seems like something has happened and he has lost because the children have been taken from our town and from the next town and the next town. So it seems like on this dance off this year, Vada Johan has been the winner. And, and what what what's so good about uh, Father Johan? Why is he so? What's it? What what special moves does he have? That old he does the, the pop and lock. He does the right. moonwalk. He does the running man. He does all this. You see, he has right. many many legs of crabs and so with that he can do many fly moves okay well, that's an unfair advantage that sounds like an unfair advantage is there any sort of uh, um any sort of rules involved or there are no rules in a dance off it is literally mm. two men go in and one man leaves and yeah, it seems but... as though the mongoose king Sadly, he is not as fly this year as he normally is. So it's he has um, lost and he has turned to cream somewhere in the wilderness. Right, so we're, we're, we're talking oh. about Bones, Cream, Children and and, and the Mongoose King. But the Fata Yoan seems like he's the one that we don't like, right? But we've when got to find seems. the Mongoose King. I don't cream. know what yeah. part of the story you don't understand. It was all very clear, okay? <laughs> It yes, sounds sir. like, yeah, yeah, but, but to it? be fair, it sounds it sounds like a step up at the Sea Life Centre. Mm, that's, that's what it sounds a bit like. I don't know whether to be hungry or scared or horny. Yeah, never uh, been there, never seen well, it. Welcome to our world, big man. Okay, you know what does this thing about the, this? every year for us? Okay, but Figgy knows this. I'm a brilliant <laughs> dancer. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> 
I learned from a rug with the best of them he can. I learned from my big brother Hogarth. He does it on the tables every time he has too much grog. He's a brilliant dancer. I learned from him. If you wanna if you wanna see Mojo cut a rug right, you should see his Macarena. He's amazing. Yeah. I've got to do a brilliant Macarena. I just got to go somewhere. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Oh, Don't okay. But you're going to help us. Never yeah, mind. The five of you, okay? The five of you. The time for dancing is over. Unfortunately, we have to, if we are going to save the children and their bones, we have to act fast, okay? Now, if you wish to help us, then we can tell you where Vada Johan resides. But we do not have the manpower, so we have not gone to save the children ourselves because it is too dangerous, but you all look like you are made of sterner stuff. Just so if you wish to do it, then can I, we will point you there. So they've already had the dance off this year? Yes, the yeah. time for dancing is over. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. oh, that's a shame. Last and got creamed. Oh, right, yes. got it, yeah. I thought Literally, that had the last King, year. He's cream. Right, I so, thought he was cream from last year. I thought we had to go yeah. and find him and decream him. No, well, no. Unfortunately, um, the Mongoose King cannot be uncreamed unless mm. Vadi Johan is defeated. Unless Vadi Johan is is destroyed, I, I, or I we wait what, until I, next I'm year. I'm good at creaming, guys. I can never make him uncream. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> well, well, I'll put it right. this way: you got we'll, this power, Vicky. Well, we'll help you. Know, you. We're talking about we're talking about all this blowing of flutes and all this cream and all these bones and I mean I got to get quite excited. What happens down there? We'll we'll help you, Mister Mayor. We're we're your only hope. He's not the mayor you're talking to, mate. Yeah. You blind? What? We're talking to the assistant, Mojo. Mayor, Mayor, when ages ago? Did they? The, ma- the mayor's yeah. still there. No, was, he's still sitting. Quiet. I was too busy admiring this hope. Anybody think yeah. the man lived it? He could no, live it, you know. It is nice, yeah. Yeah, I was looking at that as well. Yeah. The man, I am the, here, guys. The man looks like he's the man with money. Now, I've got to be honest with you. All right, I've got one question. What does the mongoose king taste like? Because I like cream. No, we're not supposed to drink the mongoose king's cream. <laughs> no, we leave the we, cream alone. Until we. It's, yeah. we I'm starting to think this video. Oh, calm down, it. Figgy. Calm down, Figgy. You're not drinking any cream on YouTube, tonight. You know that. I was just interested. I mean, there's nothing like a cat that gets the cream. Yeah. yeah. No, but there'll, there'll be these kids on the, on YouTube and search engine be like, um, uh, Mongo typing these animals' names in and that, and this video's going to come up on the search. <laughs> I, think fine. I can safely say that Misfit Adventures are unavailable for children. Mm. We are we are on the eighteen well, only surface. Good, That's eighteen right, plus. <laughs> um, right. right. Well, how, how do we get to all, uh, the uh, father, Johan. Cram, cram, father Johan's father Johan? Johan he resides in a cave near the River Glockenspiel, which is called the Pinderschlock Cave. It okay. is north through the exit of town. And it is maybe two hour walk from here. It's not very far. Right. Um, it is quite an easy walk, but uh, yes, That's if you wish to brave the cold, it. then it is quite easy to find. If you go straight north, then you will find it. Question for the DM. Did you call it the River Glockenfield just because it was a funny word? I'm throwing in as many funny words as possible. Yes. Was it Glockenfield? Wait till we find out what the mayor's name is. Glock and Glock. Spiel. Glock and Spiel. All right. You know, he's in the music. We have a Glock and Spiel. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, in all fairness, in all fairness, right, the DM did bring up a really good point there. Um, I mean, I want to be Misty's mayor, so I really would like to find out what the mayor's name is. His name is um, Hans. Uh... Hans Gruber. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> well... What the guy, motherfucker. <laughs> his assistant isn't uh, Mr. McLean, is it? Uh, John? It's, it's interesting. Hans, Hans Gruber was my BBEG last Christmas. <laughs> oh, those are kind mm, of oh, mm. So, yeah, well, I, I mean, I'll Figgy Gruber. 
I can go with that. That works for me. I'll tell you what, if we get rid if we get rid of this bad guy, I'm coming back for you. Oh yeah. That mean you're gonna leave leave me, Figgy. You won't be my best friend no more. Well you you no, you I tell you what, you could be my maid of honor at the wedding. Uh, maid of honor, yeah. That mean I've got to wear a dress. Well yeah. Don't tell old girl. He, 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 he won't let me forget it. I'm going to be a... Yeah. I'm going to wear a dress. What the hey, fuck are you right. two talking about? Let's, let's go. Yeah. I can't tell whether that's Dan or Dave. Let's fucking <laughs> go. Come on. I've had enough. A little bit of both. Yeah, let's go. Let's go north. North. Uh, I don't like walking north. It's like walking uphill. Is there anything... Uh, Mr. What, what was your name again? Is uh, Hans Gruber. Gruber. Mr. Gruber, yeah. Mr. Gruber, yeah, Mr. is there anything that you can provide to us to, to aid us on our journey? I'm not expecting much. Well, we do not have much. Um, I think that, um, oh, I, I, there is one thing we can give you perhaps, and he kind of taps. Benny on the elbow and kind of motions to a cabinet over to the side. It looks like a drinks cabinet, um, but when he pulls something out of there, you can see that the vial looks not alcoholic at all, what's inside. Um, and he hands it over to you and says, this is a, a potion that might help if, uh, if you do find Father Johan, he is uh, most strong, so you might find this helpful. Um, and then it's, uh, um, yeah, he gets another one. He motions, motions to Benny to get another one. So you've got two minor healing potions. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, cheers. I want to keep some of them for, you, for yourself after the wedding night. I could be a bit rough. Well, I think, Figgy, you're probably best to hold on to one of these. Um, don't know where that damage is going to go. Yeah, Mr. Gruber, sir. Yes? Do you actually have any cream? I'm really hungry now. <laughs> you can, you can the... eat some snow when we get outside. Don't eat the yellow snow. No, I was just going to say, please, not the yellow one, because... Old Garth made me eat the yellow one <laughs> once. And think, and to be honest with you, it tasted like a piss, and I don't know why. That's well, a different story for another time. I think you need to uh, put your hunger on hold. I'm remembering all these because stories. the bloke that's going to eat the children. Oh yeah, you can help him eat the children, Mojo. It's fine. Come on, we go. Eat no children. Oh, kill the bastard who eats the children. And let's hurry up because I think he might be munching on him now. Sorry. Oh, Figgy, if, if a man's eating the truth, you know how I get angry when that when it's going to be a fight. You're not the only one who's got his blood boiling. It's okay, mm. don't you worry. We're gonna we're gonna start heading out, and I start skipping towards the rock. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Here, uh, oh, you're a dwarf, stop. not a gnome. Slostrophobic, here, have this other potion, mate. You look a bit squishy. Yeah, it's well squishy. I'm not that squishy. squishy. I'm pretty squishy. You're not really squishy. Yeah. No, no, your boobies are, though. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> you can't really, you can't, in all honesty, you can't really see my uh, see my boobs. I'm wearing flipping half plate armor. Just as well, though, because if you'd been skipping like that and that, you would have been knocking them on your knees. <laughs> Two black Sorry. eyes. Yeah, yeah, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll have you know that my boobies are nice and pert, especially in this cold weather. Yeah, that's why you don't like going north, because your boobs are going south. Oh, wow. <laughs> Shit. Oh, Mojo, you're, you're cruising for a bruising. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You just wait for to swing in my hammer. Okay. Right, so which way is north? The opposite to your boom. Hey, uh, that way. Well, north star, didn't you? That way. That oh, way. Bollocks is cloudy. 
Uh, ev- how about everyone do a survival check? Oh. Oh, yeah. I'm really good I'm at that. Oh, so close to being good. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, so 16. 10. Uh, and 18 with modifier. One of my many skills that I get a minus on. Four. I got a 12. 17. Nine. Okay. So heading out of the mayor's house, you take a couple of moments to kind of try and find your bearings, and it's Fire the Mojo who kind of managed to point you in the right direction through some means of either stargazing or just kind of looking around uh, and kind of getting a feel for the local area. You pick up which direction north is, and you head directly north out of the town, and you start to walk towards the river and the cave where Vardy Johan is supposedly held up. The temperature has definitely dropped considerably now. And as you walk through the wilderness around the town, as you go further and further north, you can start to feel a real chill. So the wind is starting to pick up. The cold air is really hitting you in the face as this wind comes along. Um, Nips could cut glass at this stage, literally. And you are kind of finding a way through the pine trees and the shrub that makes up the wilderness of this area. But uh, the wind and the snow is kind of blowing in your face and making it quite difficult to see exactly where you're going. Um, If anyone has light armor, could they roll me a constitution saving throw? Oh, this is something new. Oh, that makes a good point. That's me. Yeah. Ah, I'm good. Constitution. Oh. I have medium. Oh. Plus I have cold resistance. Ah, uh, three. Uh, I only got three. <laughs> three. I got the 14. You're dead. You got a point. So... As you start to head further and further north, after about an hour, halfway towards the cave, um, you all kind of pick up that Fired and Dave are starting to kind of really look like they're feeling the chill of the cold. You know, face is completely red, shivering a little bit. You can see that the tips of the fingers are going a little bit black. Fired is kind of hanging in there, just about. But Dave, you can see, is really starting to feel the effects of the cold, the below zero temperature he has gained a level of exhaustion from I'm being so, out in the wilderness in the cold for so long. My God, I'm so cold. <laughs> oh, hey, my darling, come here and nestle against my bosom. Thank, thank you oh, very much. You're, you're I'll, 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 I'll take No, I'll, you're I'll, I'll take like I'll, I'll take that. Um, that's, all, that's all I want, though. Nothing, nothing extra. Thanks very much, Figgy. Yeah, it's a good yeah. thing you're wearing that chest armor there, Figgy, because if your nips were razor blades, you'd be cutting your kneecaps right now. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So after a little while, um, oh, Fired and Mojo still kind of pointing you guys in the right direction towards uh, where you're supposed to be heading. You eventually start to see the woods start to clear out a little bit. Still forested area but you can start to see what looks like a, an opening. And there is a kind of small hill with a, you can see like an opening in the side of it. And you realize that this may very well be where you were directed to. You can see as you look around and you kind of creep through uh, the, the the trees you can see just to the left hand side a little bit further beyond where this kind of cave is there is a river flowing behind the back of it a little bit away so you kind of put two and two together and you realize oh this may very well be the cave that we're supposed to be at this is maybe river glockenspiel Um, so this must be the cave Oh, right, let's go get up. Be prepared for anything. They might try and jump us. 
I'm really cold. What um, what I was going to ask is we can assume um, because of the direction, Mojo and uh, Fayad are at the front leading the way. Um, what um, who, what what's the order? I'm for still the rest within of you? Figgy's breasts. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like you're just resting your head all okay, the way. Okay, along, resting my head. No, it's like not like you stay right there, tweet. Oh, okay. no, not small, like, like, figgy, I could just imagine, it. like, Figgy sort of, like, struggling through the snow with this, like, head disappeared between the bosom. It's just this body with legs, like, dangling out. Miserable, miserable head between the two boobs. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you right in there, Dave? <laughs> yes, yeah, you're yeah, right, actually. Nice quite nice. Human, Dave. I'm a human, yeah, I am, yeah. So you're on your knees. I'm just dragging him up the hill, it's fine. Oh, I'm used to having a man on his knees in front of me. He's fine. Don't I'll you be, worry about it, thing. Your <laughs> breast strength. Oh, yeah. I'll be in third. <laughs> I'll, I'm just, yeah, I'm there. Third in a line. I'll, I'll go second. So behind firehead. I can't quite contemplate Mojo knowing more than the someone else the exact direction that we're meant to be heading in so i'll go second i'm a middle-aged dwarf with a man between my boobs um but i'm but with the dexterity of a well worse than all brand so i'll be like <laughs> dave's just limp and being held up by <laughs> the squeeze Lovely. of the breasts either side he's just limp, <laughs> dragged along uh it's all right, you keep your head in there and keep it warm for you. Be fine. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> okay. Well, a person who's in someone's breast, mm. you're so depressed. <laughs> you sound so depressed. Well, it's just yeah, for yeah, warmth, you. really. Uh, so, that's all, you know, that's it, really. I mean, you could carry me if you want. Um, we could get on your back, couldn't we? Well, the I don't think... No, 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 no. Oh, sorry. Yeah, not uh, not mine at all. What was I thinking? What am I thinking of? Centaur. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm thinking. It's all right. I mean, it, different I, kind of I species. Really got the young one anyway. You probably want to back an older pig tail like you're riding the Tonkin. <laughs> anyway, that's the order of March. The pig tails alone. They took me fucking ages. <laughs> And every time you right, give her so, she makes that Whoa, bah, 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 noise. <laughs> so fire, fire is at the front, right? If I'm to believe. Yeah, as, yeah. As, as I'll, any I'll good yeah. ranger yeah. should be. Yes. Okay. Um, do a perception check for me. All right. Uh, perception, perception, perception. Perception. Okay. And this... I'll give you. I'll, I'll, I'll let you into a secret. My, my, my nipple, the pointy north. Sixteen. Okay. Cool. So, as you start to kind of enter into this kind of clearing nearer to where this cave embedded into this hill is, before everyone starts to kind of pile in, you kind of hold up your hand for a second, and you kind of motion for everyone to stop, and you kind of point over to something which you can see off in the distance and it's these three large creatures not too far from the entrance of the cave um, and they are probably a good kind of four or five feet at the shoulder on all fours big white fur with speckled black spots here and there and one of them turns uh, not looks at you but turns towards you and you can see that it's got almost like a beak and big yellow eyes and tufts around its skull. And they haven't noticed you yet, but you can see that there are three of them kind of hovering and kind of wandering around the entrance of the cave. Okay. Uh, can I, I, I perhaps kind of very slightly uh back out of the situation and see if i can just let the guys behind me know that we have a potential enemy in front of us so that, that we can create a plan accent, that. That, that was that was a 
brilliant accent that I picked up a Brooklyn, a Mexican and uh, a uh, almost like a Spanish guy at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around like go many places. <laughs> I think with these sunglasses on as well. I'm like really mm. yeah, yeah. Um so uh yeah, I'm I'm going to uh, not engage, uh, back up and and speak to the group and say there's some big like white things ahead and they look nasty. Should we should we strike or should we go around? Uh, what kind of white things? Cuz snowmen are white things. Uh, they had these beaks and like, these crazy yellow eyes and they had tufts of skulls around their skulls and they looked pretty nasty. So I think we could take them, but, uh, you know, we could try and avoid them. We could avoid. <laughs> it's exactly like the picture. <laughs> the Why picture. did you have to go do that? Why? Uh, that's basically what they look like. Well, no, that's Figgy. Fight. <laughs> that is what I imagine Figgy <laughs> Hey, this is Figgy. Did yeah. Figgy looks like a fat bloke. And that's and that's what you look like. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> the character looks like that. The, the Guess you is... made, oh. I'm gonna get killed. Oh, <laughs> oh now that, that's harsh. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh get rid of get rid of get rid of Gillette Fusion uh, pack, pack, uh, gift set for Christmas, and as you look gorgeous. <laughs> Excuse me, I've been growing this out. <laughs> Before Christmas. All right, yeah. so what do you want to do? Should we should we try and evade it? Evade them? Or shall we just strike? I'm you right. have a route round because I'm knackered, mate. I'm about as useful at stealthing as a chocolate teapot. So I like second that. I like the fight. Well, <laughs> why don't us rogue types? Sneak round behind them, and then you lot that can't stealth, you just attack them, and then we'll flank them. How about that? All right. And if we if we attack them first, actually, I get a surprise hit. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah, yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Yes. But well, yeah. what if they're not actually horrible? Well, it was their own fault for looking mean. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing we can their do about fault that. For looking like nature. Nature made them yeah. scary. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> for a reason. For a reason in my eyes. Hey, I hate to go see you if we weren't friends. You'd well, probably no, attack I'd, me. I probably would, yeah. You're probably right. <laughs> yeah. No question. So, what does, what does cla- claustrophobic think? <laughs> I forget in these was well, well, claustrophobic. He changed his name. I, 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 claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> no what do you think? It's translucent. Uh, uh, I've been reading my druid character and feature traits for the last 20 minutes, trying to, uh, <laughs> trying to work out, doing, out. But I haven't really paid attention. Uh, uh, I agree with um, Seto Padgett. So I agree with that. He agrees with the Buffix man. Agreed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so if me and me and uh, multilinguistic man go and face him head on, and then the rest of you, old uh, grumpy and figgy and uh, costa, I yeah, claustrophobic man and buttocks man, all go round the back and catch him by surprise. Mr. What about both me and you? Wasn't Mojo that turned the other way around? <laughs> <laughs> what about both me and you, Mojo? Attack what? from the front because we're both the same, and the others funny. try. Can we oh, see it another way around, dear? Can we see like a, a, a I don't know, like a, a route where we can get past them or flank them from a different position? Um, to be honest, from where you are at the moment, um, you kind of look to the left because the right is where you came from. And you can kind of see that the hill verges over and goes up, but you can't see any kind of other ways around. I mean, it looks as though if you could find a way around, it would take a long time to go and check it out. Um, The clearing itself, uh, these things from where you are look to be about 15, maybe 20 feet away from the entrance. So... 
feasible to stealth by if you hug the wall, but it would be quite tricky. Well, I don't Fucking fancy my chances really fired. I reckon we just stay here and I don't know, see what these lot come up with. All right, so we just we just charge him and attack and see what happens. Yeah, we we'll see. I'm gonna hang back for a bit. All right. Well, if yeah. if we do it, just attack him. I, I we, perhaps if it's us rogues do the first pop, pop up, do the hits, and then uh, you know we get our surprise bonus, and then um, then everyone else can just you know get in, get stuck in. No matter, gaming. Thanks, mate. <laughs> that's strategy. That's, that's, that's it's within the character. <laughs> the art of surprise. It is always yeah. up for discussion. So, okay, uh, uh, uh. Mr. DM, would I be able to work out what these creatures are? You could potentially. Um, if if you've got a skill that will help with that, that makes things easier, but you can roll for a nature check if you want. Cool. Have a nature check then. Uh, well, fuck you know. Uh, again, something that I am a minus at. Uh, my nature, 11. 11. Um, I mean, we could, we could say that even though you can't quite tell what they are, partly because of distance, partly because of obscurity from the surroundings, they don't look that dissimilar because you've quite you know seasoned you've had a lot of jobs you've been around the block a few times um so you've seen a few things they look somewhat similar to albers but they look like a little bit different because they have white coats as opposed to the usual kind of grayish brown ones that you're used to seeing so snowy albers potentially Mm. I'm just concerned that they're not hostile. Right. Could. Oh, man. Only thing is, Mojo, they're in the way. Oh, we could say hello. I could say hello. Can you please move out of the way, please? Because I don't want to have to dare dismember you with my great axe because you look quite, quite a nice person. Right. Can anyone speak to animals? Well, no, I bloody can't. Um, this is where I might come in useful. Are you uh, going to speak to animals? I can. Oh. Go on, right. in, get, get, go on. Get your yeah, They actually have speak with animals. Um, so, yeah. Okay, this could be interesting. How the hell do you do an owlbear voice? If it is an owlbear. <laughs> 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 we don't find out. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what? I'm, I I think I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go f- more more misfitted with it because speaking to animals, it's gonna use a spell slot. I don't want to use a spell slot. Um, could I? <laughs> could I use um minor image to create a creature? sort of run it across in front of them um yes oh. well i can change into a creature if i might be that creature uh, i'm trying to look at what challenges mm. i can do uh, i forget how the challenge system works in apologies uh, no sorry carry on with that idea i'll just uh, keep looking at things and i might change into something genius later on I can do. I can. I can use my cantrip minor illusion. Sounds like a plan. Um, if I could use my, I could use minor illusion and send something across in front of them and see. What so let's as it as it as it's Christmas. How how bigger can what's what's, what's big? How big? Reindeer. Create right, its volume and range. Whisper of screen. Extra large. 
No, it's got to fit inside a five foot cube. Okay, so uh, as it's as it's Christmas, uh, I'm gonna create a Christmas elf with the with with the with the hat, the pointy ears, the the jingly bells on his thing, and I'm just gonna sort of stand him in front of these three creatures. What I would say is that's got thirty foot range. Yeah. And you are probably double the distance from them. So I need um, both are that, that that's not going to work for me. It, okay, is there anywhere that I can actually hide anywhere near them? There are there are trees nearby. So if you wanted to get a little bit closer so that you could cast the spell, you could try and do a like a stealth check to get near enough to them so they don't pick you up and pick up your scent or anything. Will that include me? Because I'm w between his breasts, her breasts. <laughs> you're, you're, you're out now. So if you're going with them. <laughs> I'm freezing. I'm with my breasts. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what, right? It's up to you. I mean... There, there is no way that I can stealth anywhere. Especially not with me. Well... I'm 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 already at a disadvantage, but my stealth is minus four. Yeah. I'm not gonna be out of stealth anyway. So if I stealth, I'm making noise. The only other thing that I could really do using my bardic skills. I reckon we send Mojo in. Mojo, go and go and chop these things in, in off. Do it on. Oh, they, they might be nice. Just go, we, you know, we got to get, there's, there's children <laughs> on the line here, right? Bloody owl bears. Go and chop them in half. Wherever I they are. I, I, I don't know. Figgy, what do you think? Uh, I, do you guys want me to cast speak to animals? And I'm just going to have a chat with these things. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't want to kill anyone innocent. And then if that's if they attack you, we can just use that as a distraction to go past. Sure, thanks. <laughs> is that all right? You, want... you can handle yourself, can't you? Would Fuck. you like me to assist you, Figgy? I'm only, I'm only joking. Uh, uh, wait, wait uh, to see. It. I'll tell you what, just wait to see if the damn thing attack me. You know, I might I might be really charismatic. Don't you have a decision? <laughs> Not with, not with uh, speaking with animals. <laughs> Go on, then. I'm going to cast. I'm going to. I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to use one of those spell slots and cast speaking with animals. I'll be thirty feet away from Figgy when she starts talking to him. Please. Be at the ready, though, know, just in case. But I don't want to yeah. let anyone. Well, it lasts for ten minutes. So. Do I have to attempt to do the weird? Yeah. Well, there you go. I've just done it. <laughs> um, well, so you're going to go right up to the my. Well, I've got, um, I've got to do it to the point. I mean, can I speak with animals and then do it through message? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Well, it's a uh, message of his cantrip and speak with animals is a spell. So I can effectively use them at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> And we're not in combat. <laughs> but it's up to DM's transgression. I don't know. That's why I'm waiting. Uh, I'm just checking the distance. Oh, okay. It's pretty far. Message has got a decent distance, yeah. Um, okay. Go for it. Yes! <laughs> yeah, bardic, baby. Um, so what are you going to say? I don't fucking know. <laughs> sort of like, it's going to be like, uh, hello, my darling. I know you're standing out there in the cold, but you don't need to anymore. If you really want to go in the warm, I'm sure that there's going to be some lovely grub waiting for you by a nice warm fire with a big pile of hay. And I don't think you really, really want to stand out in the cold anymore because, you know, your nipples are going to end up cutting dry. Yeah. And they all kind of, the three of them, as soon as they hear this this noise, they kind of prick up their ears and they kind of look around. They're kind of a bit confused because they can hear this noise, this voice speaking to them, but they're not quite sure where it's coming from. 
and they just kind of look at each other and they just continue on looking around in the uh, in the scrub where they are to try and find some food. No, not there, you stupid creatures. I still got... <laughs> <laughs> no, inside the cave. There's loads of food waiting for you. And it's not warm in there. It really is, I promise. Why would right. I lie to you? Major, I don't know what he's doing, but I think you're going to have he's to go doing, and chop him in. He's off. doing? Sorry, no. she. I get confused. It's the beard. It's the beard. puts me off. Doing Sorry. Sorry, love. Sorry. Yeah. Not no. the same genders. So you should be. Um, it. <laughs> so what do you want me to do then, Figgy? I don't want you to do nothing. Because I've still got, I've still got, I've got 10, I've got 10 minutes. Okay. Let's give her 10 minutes, Mojo. Yeah, message message lasts for uh, one round, so that's pretty much over. <laughs> but speaking with animals is continuing to run. Well, I don't think that worked, guys. I mean, I was really hoping that the DM was going to let me roll persuasion, but he didn't. <laughs> I get my short bow out and fire an arrow at them. Oh, Tom. Uh, well, <laughs> Mojo, you're being, you're being, you're being a wuss. Someone I'm not being a wuss. I'm not trying to start a war with and hurt danger, other animals, and that when they might not have done nothing wrong. Well, you're supposed to be a big scary barbarian, and you're just sitting there whinging about. Well, you want to find out, then you miserable fuckwit. Yeah, I'm shooting this arrow and and attacking them, so you're gonna have to use it now. Hmm. I release the arrows. Um, which one do you want to aim at? There's one kind of nearer to the cave mouth, and then there's two, almost like in a row below it. Um, the the closest, most obvious target. Closest one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, Eleven. Uh, 11 is a miss. <laughs> so <laughs> the arrow goes screeching through the air, whizzes by, and just goes between two of these large animals. And as it does so, they kind of look at where the arrow landed, and then they kind of look and they can start to see a couple of you in the distance hiding behind these trees. And all of a sudden, they start to turn aggressive and they start to come towards you. And this is where we roll for initiative. All right, here we go, Mojo. Uh, now it's your this turn. Is, this, this is, is where, where Mojo's standing there go, pointing, pointing at, uh, <laughs> at Dave, going, who was in? Who's fault? Too late for that, Mojo. Come on. I'm going to ask when they have a moment if the host can let me screen share as oh, well. Oh, Nat 20 on that. Hold on, Nat 20, what's your initiative on me? Plus three, 23 G. There you go, bro. Cool. Okay. So this is what we are looking at. I didn't use Albert Radio. Unfortunately, work was too busy. I didn't have yeah, the time. No. But this, I hope, is a good alternative. Nice. That's I cool. Yeah, um, I do. You've all got your own tokens there, so... Oh, yes, man, it's been my, my figgy looks gorgeous. Look at I that. Like it. Bloody yeah, she does. Yeah, she looks, looks, unreal. Yeah, like looks completely unrealistic, then, James. Totally yeah. unrealistic. Yeah. Can't to be fair. <laughs> my tiny one looks not far off, actually, to be fair. That's, that's a good one. Oh, figgy's pretty. What's that all about? <laughs> So you, can, uh, you probably tell who is who, but just to be yes. safe, at the front is fired, then Mojo, then obviously um, Seto, then behind Seto is uh, Claustrophobic, then to the left of Seto is Dave, and behind Dave is Figgy. Sweeter than so, that, baby. Sweeter than that. Did anyone get over 20? Yeah, uh, I got a nat 20 plus three on my initiative. Strong. Okay. And between 15 and 20? 18. Okay. Uh, between 10 and 15? 13. Oh, echo. You probably will go first because I got plus zero on initiative. Yes. So, so I got 13 as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so I've got a plus me. four initiative. Okay, so Fayad will go first out of two. Um, and then, yeah, miscellaneous. What else did we get? Four. <laughs> uh, four. Nice. Minus two. What? <laughs> you miss around. <laughs> Ouch, that'd be harsh. <laughs> Minus two. Okay. Um, right. So uh, each of these is uh, Ooh, these squares is five feet, as yeah. you probably guess. Um, so let me just make sure I've got this set up properly. Yes, good. Okay, cool. Uh, so Mojo is first. Okay. Right, uh, I want to walk in it's a bit 40 feet. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Um, can you move me literally just across straight in, in one straight line over to 40 feet? So it should take me to that upper tree. Um, up this way or down this way? Yeah, uh, just down a bit, up, up, up another square. Yeah. Yeah, one more square. That'll do. Yeah, I'll go there. Um, I will launch my javelin at the one on the right-hand side, which is near the top. Um, oh, shit. Uh, that's a 30 feet. Is that going to reach 30 feet? Yeah, yeah, that's 30. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right, I will roll. I love the way he grabs that shaft. Do, do, do. Oh, that's that only might. Oh, no, that's his brother. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, 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 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 to hit. It's a hit. Okie doke. And we've got. Man, I've got some of the weirdest spell combinations. Just. Oh, you are. You made random. And that's uh, seven points of damage on that. And cool. what I'll do is I'll. Uh, I'll rage for um, my next go, please. Okay. And that'll be my turn. Thank you. Cool, Dave. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. <clears throat> right, Dave is going to accompany Mojo as far as he can go. His movement speed is 30. So you probably get like somewhere around here. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to shoot and hmm. <laughs> I'm going to cover myself in snow, just like grabbing it and covering myself in snow. And I want to roll a, a stealth check to, to like, as a bonus action to try and hide. Okay. Obviously because then looking advantage. right at you. You have to do it with disadvantage. I have disadvantage literally... anyway because I'm yeah <laughs> exhaustion. Yeah. yeah. Right, then he tries to be a pussy about it. <laughs> uh, nine. Um, well, yeah, you think you're hidden, so you kind of lay on the floor and you start to kind of get the <laughs> snow and kind of pull it over you. Um, but there's still lots of kind of bits of your clothes sticking out. Your boots are kind of sticking out upwards like that. And you can see these creatures are just kind of looking at you and cocking their heads like that as they're slowly approaching. So I'm yeah, doing that. Know you're there. Why is he making snow angels? So, uh, mm. oh, God, don't look at me or gesture towards me in any way because they don't know I'm here. And I'm going to take a shot at one of them. <laughs> With normal, oh, normal point in, please. Uh, with the short bow, twenty-one to hit. And... Uh, yeah. Where's oh, the D six gone? Oh, there it is. Uh, and that is seven points of piercing damage. Which one are you going for? Top, middle, or bottom? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am going for the one in the center. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that strikes him dead on. So and that's cool. And that's uh, Dave's turnover. Okay. 
Cool. Um, Thayad. Okay, I'm going to move over to just behind the rocks, uh, just below. Yep, that's right. And uh, I, I, ooh, I'm going to pop the bow and try to um, take a shot at the uh, out there in the center. Mm -hmm. I'm really doing fire attacks. If you're there, just bear in mind that there is this tree just in the middle here. So that one in the center, your vision's obscured. You could get the top one, but this oh, one okay. and this one are, yeah. I'd bend the arrow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it turns to a boomerang. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. That so, the, <laughs> so if the one in the center is is not quite on, I'll go for the one to the left of the center. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think this should be still in the range. Um, so, yeah, uh, I use my sneak attack because um, the okay, bad guys haven't rolled yet. And da, 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 uh, But first, I need to roll for attack, which is... Uh, it is uh, 12. Fudge. Uh, 12 is a miss, unfortunately. God. Damn it. Uh, I think that's been... Uh, for a bonus action, I'll hide behind the rocks. Um, okay. But that's it. That's me. Okay. Lame. Uh, oh. Seto. Um, I know I can't reach any of them, so I'll go move my full movement um, to Hogarth. Here come the it's yours 30 or 40? Uh, my one's 30 because I chose fighter as my main barbarian second. Okay, so that will put you about here-ish. Yeah. And I'll hold my action to, if I see... Any of them in range, I will throw a hand axe in them. Okay, cool. Um, I think then it's their turn. Um, so they do have a movement of 40 feet. So this one is going to run up here. This one is going to run there. And this one is going to run here. Um, so basically, one has engaged each of you at the front there. I'd like to use my reaction. Mm. I'll tell you what it is. Hang on. Um, okay. <clears throat> so as a reaction, this is, a, I think it's a scout thing that you can do. It's like the scout um, rogue thing. Uh, you can move up to half your speed as a reaction when an, end, an enemy or ends its turn. Okay, so you haven't ended your turn. Okay, that's fine. So I can do that once you've ended your turn. Mm -hmm. um, can I throw my hand axe as I have my action? You can, yeah. Um... That is a 17 to hit. That's enough to hit, yeah. So, yeah, and that is a 1d6 plus 4. Um, 5 plus 4, so that is 9 points of damage. Mm -hmm. As this hand axe sinks into its shoulder blade. Yeah, so it runs up to you and you manage to get a good hit in as it comes towards you. And we'll go from top to the bottom. So the first one is going to take a swipe with its claw at Mojo for 17 to hit. Mojo, you've been attacked. Hit. And then it's a hit, just it's a hit. Okay. So that will deal uh, 13 slashing damage. 
uh, the next one on Seto. And that's hard because um, you're raging, Mojo. Yeah, good point. So what am hmm. I doing then? Because what we're doing is half the... So six. We'll go, we'll go down to six damage then. Wow, I must be a really mean DM because I would round up. Oh, I yeah, well, yeah, it works both ways. You are an arsehole, mate. You are an arsehole. <laughs> <much of it. laughs> no, I don't recognize <laughs> the other DM. You're still playing these campaigns. So. Yeah, we're not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the only one who's not lying to him. He, he, could be a cool, he could be a lovely bastard, but he could be a cruel bastard. <laughs> So the second one claws at Seto with an 11 to hit. Um, that's a miss. And then the third one sees Dave lying on the floor. It's a little bit confused and try and takes a bite out of it with its beak for nine to hit. Oh, nine misses. In- yeah. Nine misses. Cool. Nine misses. Now, as this happens, um, you can all kind of see something from behind these trees emerging. There's a bit of a kerfuffle. There's a bit of a rustling of the tree. And you see that mum starts to appear. Oh, bollocks. (laughs) Oh, no. Um, And that's the end of their term. Oh shit! No, I know so, how it feels when I bring stuff out. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I yeah, it's not that. nice, is it? <laughs> it's not. Um, can I use my reaction now that you finish your turn to uh, jump fifteen feet back, like directly up, fifteen feet? This uh, this reaction doesn't provoke opportunity attacks either. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah. up here, roughly. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, cool. that's fine. Um, yeah, and then that brings us to, I believe, claustrophobic. All right, can I move down just past uh, Fayed uh, so that I can see uh, the first two creatures in line with each other? Uh, yeah. yeah. And now I use my ice knife attack. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice, nice. And that is a stop rolling. Oh, not very good. Uh, that is a fourteen to hit. Fourteen's enough. Oh, sweet. Okay then. So that gives me. Uh, that gives uh, three piercing damage. And then, apparently, hit or miss, the shard then explodes at the target, and each creature within five feet of it must succeed on a dexterity saving throw. And so I think within five feet, the uh, creature behind it. Uh, yeah. Reckon? Okay, cool. Yeah, so, yeah, dexterity saving on that one, please. So I got four. Ah, okay, cool. Well, I win on that one. Uh, and take two d6 cold damage, right? Let me do that. And try, all these. And that is a ten cold damage, please, on that one behind it. Mm. Okay. I believe that's everything I'm willing to do. Okay, cool. So, Figgy, last but not least. Well, you know, I did tell you I was going to be flipping slow, but here we go. Get me 25 feet as close to the fight as I can get um, because I'm, you know, still pretty slow. I'm still excited for having Dave's head in between my bosoms. <laughs> What I'm gonna do is I'll be trying to think of an insult, right, to throw at an owl bear, and I couldn't really come up with one. So I thought I've just sort of gone with uh, yeah, your father with a panda. Yeah. Um, 
and I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery. So would you... Uh, do a what are you a paladin bard? I am a one level bard, a four level paladin. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, weird wisdom saving throw, please. Is it just funny insults? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Three. Three. Well, that's definitely a fail. So, uh, you're going to take a massive, like, ridiculous six points of psychic damage. Mm-hmm. And, My and, dad's not a panda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your dad the panda. Um, and in all honesty, uh, both was a polar bear. Yeah, all of my bonus, all of my bonus action spells are paladin. So uh, I'll leave those. I think. <laughs> no, I'll leave those. I'll leave those. Yeah, no, that that is pretty much Figgy done. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay, well, that's round one. So we're back to Mojo again. Okay. Uh, obviously, I've raised some of the frenzy. Um, right, I'm going to use my great axe and attack the one that I... I'm directly facing. So here we go. Oh, that's not too bad. That's an 18 to hit. 10 plus 8. Hits. Lovely. And damage. Right. So that's going to be 11 points of damage on that one. Okay. And for my next hit. We've got oh, 14 to hit. That still hits, yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Okie doke. And for damage on that one, is that's going to be just a basic 10 points of damage on that one. Okay. And I get a third, I get a third one, don't I, because I'm freezing. Is that right? Because I get two attacks anyway, but I only took the one last time because I only had the one uh, thing to throw that would have reached. Um, so let me double check my uh, two seconds. Yeah, while raging, yeah, choose a friend, you can make a single melee weapon. So yeah, I do, I get a third. Do we get okay. Two Frenzy. Yeah, okay. Um, right, so. Right, okay. We have a. Well, it's a 17 to hit, so we know that one hits. Mm-hmm. And the final damage of the turn. Oh, okay. That's a nine to. Uh, nine points of damage. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, with those those three strikes, one after the other, barreling down on this creature, uh, they are powerful enough to take this one down. So you can now see that there's a big heap lying on the floor in front of you where this creature was once standing, bloodied, cut to pieces. Mum doesn't look happy. <laughs> uh, I was in typical Mojo fashion. He's like, I'm so sorry, you look so cute. I wanted one of you for Christmas. Uh, your mummy's going to be mad at me. Uh, uh. <laughs> then, Thank you. That's my turn. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dave. Dave is going to use his. Oh, fuck. What's it called again? Uh... Two six. Cunning action. To so take the dash action, increase his running speed to 60 feet. And he's going to make his way along, like back and along the cliff top, a cliff edge. See what I mean? Yeah. As far so, as I can get. What? Like <laughs> up here. Yep. <laughs> Um, I don't want to go any further. No, just back back one's all right. 
Yeah, hey, good. where are you going? <laughs> Don't, Don't worry, mate. I, 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 try, just, just trust me. I know what I'm doing. All right. Um, <laughs> Hi, Dave. Dave's going to take a shot with his short bow at the one between, uh, I was going to say Holgarth then, between Mojo and Seto. And because I have allies within five feet of the enemy, I get the extra 3d6 on the attack if I hit. Mm-hmm. Hey, what are you doing up there? Just go into Sainsbury's first. Uh, I'll be back in. <laughs> in Iceland. Does a does a twelve hit? It doesn't, unfortunately. No. So I'd like to use a luck die to re-roll. Okay. So the luck beat. Oh fucking even worse. I'd like to use another luck die <laughs> to re-roll again. Is a 13 hit? 13 hits. Thank God for that. Uh, now you know it's AC. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be... Oh. 11 plus... Uh, 2. So 13 damage from my bow. Okay. And that so, will end the turn. Yeah, so stealthily making your way up on the cliff edge, you take a shot, have it dead in your sights, manage to pierce it through one ear, and the arrow comes out the other, and that one too falls in a heap on the floor. Nice. Mummy, you're happy. All the days work. Mummy's really not happy now. Um, He's as well. He's as well. I'm sorry. So that's uh, fired. Fired. Cool. Uh, the baby bear left. Would that would that be five feet within range of Seto? It is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So I do my sneak attack uh, on that. So I roll to hit. Uh, I get a, a fifteen, which I know hit. 15 hits, yeah. Yay. All right. So sneak attack uh, for the six. Uh, so one, two, three, four. And plus four. Yes. So for the six plus my modifier is hits for 21. 21 damage. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. It's a very good hit. It manages to strike quite a vital part of the owlbear. And you can hear it let out a really loud, almost ear-piercing screech. It's still standing, but its legs are very, very shaky at this stage. I just realized I had an extra D6 there. <laughs> Never mind. I got a good hit. It's fine. Oh, good. Cool. And uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just tuck back in behind the rocks again. Use my um, cunning action to just hide away. Okay. Um, Seto then. Um, first, I would like to rage. Mm -hmm. Just because I know mummy's next. I would like to rage. <clears throat> of course. And I'll just, sheer pity, I'm going to go <laughs> put the poor fucker out of its misery. With my battle axe. Two handed. Well, I think that's a 15 plus 7. Yeah, that's fine. So it's a 1d10 plus 4. Eight points of slashing damage. Yeah. If you've got a plus 4, to be honest, even if you rolled the 1, it would be enough. Um, so yes you come barreling down with your axe sever its head from its neck and it falls to the floor as well um, I would like to bonus action pick up my hand axe for the other dead carcass mm. oh no way of it and I will move maximum movement towards the mum oh 
at you about that. Just shouting out. Now a real challenge. Mm. Now he's sorry as well. <laughs> Man, I am so wasted. <laughs> what have you been drinking? What? Sorry, yeah, don't carry on. I was thinking about what I can do in the next turn. She's fun. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll be spending all all uh all of this battle and I think playing gacha <laughs> trying to get within distance. Just doing fishes mockery. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's my panda. I can't imagine. Don't worry, darlings. Figgy's here now. I'll, I'll save data, uh, Figgy. It's all over. Battle's over now. Oh, well, what a shame. <laughs> Look at my pigtails. <laughs> Ain't they lovely? So, Mama is not happy at all. She's very pissed. So, she comes running as fast as she can up to set her. See how big she is in comparison. And she is going to take I two swipes at him, um, one with each of its front claws. So the first one is, uh, what is it, plus, it is 18 to hit. That hits. Cool. So the first one manages to strike you for, oh, wow, uh, twin, hang on. 19 slashing damage. Um, reduce to half because I'm raging. So, nine then, in that case. Um, and the second one is probably going to miss. That's 11 to hit. Yeah, it misses. Okay. Um, and that is all it can and will do. So, uh, claustrophobic is next. Okay. Is there a position just uh, just southeast from where I am that I'm nestled in between trees so I can see uh, this big old creature through like a path or is that too obscured, do you think? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if you were to move here, there's quite a lot of foliage, mm. so it would obscure the vision you have. Okay. The best bet would be to kind of go more up this kind of way where you mm. kind of peek around this tree. Mm. That's probably the best option if you're looking to stay hidden. Mm. Okay, I think I'll do that second option then. Uh, so I'm keep behind that upward tree then. Okay. And there. Okay, so I will simply Uh, let's do another ice knife again, why not? Uh, so, uh, and that is a 13 to hit. 13 hits. Ah, terrific. And then I will do a, ha, a one piercing damage. Okay. And then that explodes. So, can you give me a dexterity save? Yeah, dexterity saving, please. Um, and I think that'd be 19. I got a 10. Ah, ah okay. So, that it takes the, uh, the brunt of all that one. Uh, <laughs> So that will be in that same bracket. Hopefully that doesn't do too much bad stuff. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the rolling animatronics from this website are quite slow. 
her. That would be a six of cold damage for you. Is that apologies? All right. Wasn't really worth it at all, was it? Uh, but that's all I can do, so I'll leave it there. Hey, Figgy. Man, I'm so pooped. Um. Right, well, let's get let's get as close as I can with my twenty five feet. Be about there. And man, 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 man. It's like the only range spell I've got, but it will help. Okay, uh, let's see what we can do. So I'm um, well within my 30 foot distance, I think. I am. Yep. Cool. Uh, let's try something then. I'm going to go, and as it's Christmas, I'm going to throw out one of my favourite Christmas jokes. Right. Do you know what the difference is between a snowman and a snowwoman? Snowballs! Um, and uh, uh, uh. Uh, can you make a wisdom saving throw, please? Um, 13. That is a fail, thank fuck. Um, <laughs> uh, you are now, uh, you fall prone and become incapacitated and unable to stand up for the duration of the spell. It's concentration of a minute. Wasn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, to the other It's hilarious. Okay, well. You're still speaking with animals, so they probably haven't heard jokes before. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, so yeah, so the the owl bear is now fallen prone, is rolling around on the floor, making the weirdest fucking noises ever. Because has anybody ever heard an owl? Bear? <laughs> 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 sure, sure <laughs> right, that just sounds like right. <laughs> What's that owl bear doing? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> other, other, than, other than that, a vicious mocker I've got no flipping like distance <laughs> spells at all. Mm. So yeah, that's that's yeah. Okay. Um, I well, really thought he was going to be in the thick of it and hitting stuff with a hammer, but yeah, shows you what I fucking know. <laughs> um. Well, that's round three then. Uh. So Mojo. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll go straight up to the because I've got the forty feet, so I should be get, able to get right in, right right in her grill. Yeah. So to speak. Okay. Um, right. I will go for attack number one with uh, my great axe, uh, please. Uh, right. We are going with and, and with advantage because she's prone. Oh, oh, what's the advantage? Yeah. Well, for the higher number, you roll well, what advantages. Okay, I've got a, an, an 18 to hit straight off the bat. Well, roll again. So roll again, roll again in case 20. you get in that. Yeah, that's funny. All right. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, 18 plus 8 is... 26. We got that. There you go. Glad you said that. Nice. Yeah, I um, mean, it's fine to hit, yeah. Yeah, uh, damage wise. Uh, and we're just rolling the once for damage, though, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that is a seven plus uh, it's a 12 damage. Okay, cool. And uh, am I doing two throws again for the hit again? Because of prone, or is it just the one? Yeah, no, it's, it's prone. So anything, yeah, advantage, yeah. Right, okay. Right, so first one is. Okay, that's a 16. 17 of one difference, so 17 to hit. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and damage. Uh, 11 points of damage on that one. Okay. And then for the third and finale... We have, da, 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 da. yeah, um, that's, I need a better one than that. It's only a nine. So, 
that's not, yeah. Oh, okay. That one's a 22 to hit, so we'll have that. Yeah. And damage. Yeah, plus five is 16 points of damage. Okay. So, taking advantage of the poor defenceless creature while it's on its back laughing, um, you <laughs> hack away at it, <laughs> cutting away at its belly. Um, you manage to get a few good hits in, but it's still somehow alive. Whether it's the adrenaline from the laughter or whatever it is, it's still there, kind of laughing away. Well, while she's there going, <laughs> like I'm just sort of patting on the side, saying, I'm sorry, as I've just cut you. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else you can do or want to do? That's it for me. So on to the next, please. Cool. Well, that's Dave again. How far am I from Mummy? Um, so let's see. Well, forty, so like forty-five, fifty feet in distance. Yeah. Yeah, that's not including the height of exactly. well, the hill, is. but yeah, about 50 feet away, let's say. All right, that's fine. Um, I'm going to take a shot with the short bow again. Please don't hit me. Yeah, don't hit me, I'm right in bloody front of you. 22 to hit. Yeah, that's fine. And I get the additional... 3d6. Come on, get out. Uh, and that is 18 piercing damage from the bow. Mm. Mm. Nice. Okay. So from, from where you are, you can obviously see Mojo and Seto kind of in the way. You're trying to kind of get a good shot out. And in the end, you're just like fucking just like, it's like straight up in the air. And you can see the arrow arc over and gradually it descends down and hits it square in the throat. And it kills it. And that's it. Hey, that's a hit. <laughs> that's no, a hit. That's a, that's a kill. Nice. He's I know Dave to grab your bastard, but he didn't mean it. He's sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for your babies. Oh, I really oh, did no. mean it, yeah. <laughs> Shut up! I wanted it to die, Mojo. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, nobody can hear you, Dave. <laughs> yeah, well, I can hear Mojo, so as long as I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, How miserable. Should we take a break? Oh, something! Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, we've just finished off dispatching a small family of owlbears who are minding their own business. And you now stand... I'm not vicious. I tried to them get some food. They weren't interested. Well, they now stand dead. So they're not standing at all. At your feet, outside this cave. Over to you. Like to add sail down. Using, uh, cure wounds on Seto Bassett because uh, I know some of the things come up. This is very important. We need too much for health. Uh, I'm just going to wang off a cure wounds. I'm going to go up and uh, touch Seto right in the chest and heal him for uh, only uh, seven HP. Seven and HP. nothing. <laughs> Thanks for <Ronette>. that. <laughs> No problem, Z. That knife does hurt now. <laughs> I can't really offer you any cure wounds or anything because I'm, I, 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 you know, um, I could sing you a song, but I don't want to waste my spell slots. I've got to be honest. Sorry. That's all right. I see how it is. You don't like hairy men. Well, I mean, you're not really a man, are you? Although, I bet you're unluckable. <laughs> Oh, Vicky, don't make me. Just genetics. <laughs> just an egg. It's all right. I can see you've got the yawn for me. I'm a shower. Right, I'll give you my spawn song. Fucking hell. 
If you will you stop doing uh, voice and give me a hug. Can, can Dave carelessly abseil down the cliff face, please? Carelessly? What's the definition of carelessly? carelessly. Like, Disadvantage. Just jumping? <laughs> like spawn diving? Yeah, do I'll um... leave, I can... <laughs> Please. Something, something like Please, that. Please, if you do, then that'd be amazing. That'd make my yeah, go. Um, dex, dex, say, dex, dex roll, yeah. Straight dex. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch with uh, vigorous intent. Wait, wait, wait. Can I get a maybe? Oh, it's actually counter? pretty good. It's actually pretty good. Uh, disadvantage, it's 18. All right. <clears throat> you managed to almost kind of like skate down the side of this. It's, it's not super steep, so it's relatively straightforward, but it's, you know, a good kind of 40 feet high. So it's still pretty impressive. You managed to kind of skate down uh, without any issue and kind of do a little bit of flourish as you get to the bottom as well to show off a little bit. No, 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 Dave doesn't show off. He, uh, he gets his rope and he packs it away. Very well. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> come across as the kind of guy that show off. Uh, I, I take it Dave's right outside the cave entrance now. Yeah, I mean you're pretty much right next to it. Everyone else is kind of nearby in that kind of opening there, so everyone's within like thirty feet of the entrance to the cave. Very press on. <clears throat> I think this is the way in. Hello! Not 100%. I wouldn't do that figure if I was you. It might be quite dangerous. Hello! Oh, it's different than just firing arrows at, at innocent creatures. Yeah, I mean, it's no more dangerous than firing arrows at innocent creatures. Well, I was at a distance. You were... You were really close up to it and swinging an axe into it. I was only, I was only saying after they, after they become aggressive, because you, you started it, because it was so, your arrow that they noticed. As soon as I released my arrow, they were unaggressive, were they? They didn't do anything. They were minding their own business. I, think, I, think, I, know, I know how to make Dave feel better. Come here. <laughs> we want to make it feel better more. Well, I'm knackered and I appreciate it, Figgy. It's just, you know, I think that means a lot to me, to be honest. He's so straight faced. I love him. I think he's, he's so cute. He reminds me of somebody. He reminds me of a man I love once. And if I ever get to use any of my fucking paladin stuff, I've got him. Was his name John by any chance? John is close. It did start with a J. Right. Oh, right. Okay. Not my uncle John. Then. So everyone's kind of around this cave entrance. Figgy screams into it. Nothing really happens. There's a bit of an echo, um, oh. but nothing happens aside from that. I like an echo. Well, what are the ch what are the chances of us finding this uh, this 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 uh, Captain Jose in there? Is that who we're looking for? I thought it was Brother Father. Yeah, I don't think we're Brother Father. Jose, thing, to it might be honest, exactly. Figgy. He was a he was the Father Jonah, right? He was a Jehovah Witness. Anyway, let's go. We spelled Jehovah with an I. Mm. And he ain't my God. <laughs> There's only one man I'll pray to. Oh, yes, there is. See, I'm paladin. Good I'll for you. I'm later on when I get to use some of my paladin stuff. Well, I'm going in. No. Come on, Dave. Um, Have you found anything? Release me from your bosom, woman. Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Sound effect as well. <laughs> okay, so no, nothing wrong with there it is. Anyone else? Do you really have to baby him? Well, you know, he's such a poor dear. 
He really does remind me of somebody. I don't know this person you're talking about. I just can try and walk in, follow Dave so you don't kill himself. Fire, did you get any good sneak attacks by any chance? On the bell bears? Yeah, I got a few. Yeah. I got a few. Oh, right. Yeah, that's good, that. Yeah. Got them in the eyeball a couple of times. Yeah, that's good, that. Yeah, you, that's right. What's wrong with you two? What's that, mate? What's wrong with you two? Why are you got to keep talking about them? Stupid Thank animals, you, isn't it? Not stupid animals, you're stupid. Let's say it's a thing that they do as people of their trade. Oh, you're right, Seti Buttocks. You don't have to explain it and make me feel even more worse about it. Well, I'm to that mojos. You know how he gets. I sometimes forget. My brother, yeah. old guy, doing that. You'd be dead on them on that floor, not them bears. I like them bears. They were cute and snuggly. Yeah, I'll give you cute and snuggly later, Mojo. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, but don't put your finger in. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't tell him anyone else. No fingers, I promise. Are we okay. going in or what? I thought you were already well, in I there. I thought we followed you in. <laughs> I'm not going yeah. in on my own because I'll probably die. He's talking to talk, but he won't walk the walk. Oh, anyway, I'm, let's I'm walk. I don't vision. I don't, that's all I like. I'm going to lead the way because I didn't like being last last time. I'd like to slot myself back between your bosoms. <laughs> that's all right. No. Don't. Oh. you got to earn your place in my bosoms now. I'll just go to the back then. <laughs> right, Figgy, Figgy uh, I'm just gonna. Figgy's gonna walk in with a proper sauna now. That full wiggle, you can just see a giant butt looks just fucking swinging side to side. I can't see because I'm above you. Yeah, me neither. Well, that's better than being below me. Trust me. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just going to move this along because I'm sure we'll yeah. be here an hour later if I didn't say anything. Yeah, I mean, I'm almost walking into a cave. So, so I'd, I'd like I like to let people go, but I'm already going to have to cross off an encounter because of the time. So, um, oh no! And oh, what so... um, what's the the marching order then? Who's going in what order? Well, so, I mean, Figgy's fig off. Figgy's gone. Dave's got the Is rear. Go, she can be at the front for. The, uh, I'll be behind Figgy. All the men I'll just want to be looking at my bum. Oh no, especially you, buttocks. It's in your name. <laughs> so it's Figgy, not my fault. I've got names. Seto, Mojo. Uh, then obviously oh, I think what? Dave, because Dave said he was, he was going in, but he won't go in on his own. So I think Dave's going to be there. And then it's between. Claws at the back. I have long back. Okay. Well, there you go. It's fired and... I'll be at the back with uh, claustrophobic claws. All right, then fired's behind me then. Okay. All right. Here you come the hot stepper. That fired. You got to be the winky. <laughs> fired. <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> what? Yeah, what? Ali G, when he, when he had my hand yeah, out, fired. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ah, Al Fayed. Yeah. <laughs> his name is Mohammed Al Fayed. He got his <laughs> wings. Al Fayed. <laughs> oh god. Sure, yeah, yeah. So that's the order, Mister DM. Okay, cool. So, um, uh, yeah. sorry, it is front door. Do I care? What? <laughs> you are not striking off another encounter in a minute. Come on, let's go. Well, there's only one encounter left. If we strike that off. We've already won. <laughs> As you so, were, Mr. Dip. <laughs> the the cave itself is um pretty nondescript. So as you enter in the entrance, it's wide enough for if a couple of you want to enter kind of a stride, but it's probably no wider than about 20 feet or so. Um as you walk through, it's a fairly small cave. So you've got probably 
The tallest tibia has maybe a foot above them um, where they've got a bit of space. It's probably only about eight feet high. It's, uh, it's got a bit of a rancid smell to it. You can definitely pick something up in the air. You're not quite sure whether it's uh, like something rotting or whether it's cod or whether it's some sort of animal or some sort of, I don't know, we're not quite sure what it is, but it's got kind of an odd smell in the air. As you walk through, it, it is not lit. So most people won't be able to see the surroundings unless they do have dark vision. And you can start to, as you walk through, those of you that do have dark vision, pick up little bits and pieces as you go through this, this cavern. You can see little bits of uh, stains of blood on the floor and scattered on the walls. You're not quite sure how old it is, but it doesn't look fresh. It looks to have been there for some time. Uh, you come across now and then rats skittering about. You see some bats flying overhead. And uh, more worryingly, as you get further and further into this cave-like structure, you can see what you think to be bones on the floor. You walk probably 10, 12 minutes or so before you start to see light up ahead. Now, up to this point, it had been quite, I was gonna say claustrophobic, but you know what I mean. You, see, you seem to feel like the cavern is coming in on you. You feel like it's quite cramped and it's not helped with the lack of vision for the most of you as well. But off in the distance, you can start to see some sort of natural light pouring in. Um, figure being at the front, she takes a keen interest in what's ahead and she can see that this cave or this cavern starts to open up significantly wider, off in the distance. Um, can't tell quite how much it opens up, but you can see that there is a large opening up ahead where natural light is pouring in from the roof of this cave. And even from where you are, you can tell it's a lot vaster. Um, you can see that there is a large open area that opens up. And I'm gonna put you about 20 feet away from the entrance of this opening. What do you wanna do? Behind the no. so I can't move. I'm gonna, do you know what, sweetheart? I'm gonna go and have a quick peep, all right? I'll start feeling a little bit dis disorientated. This is a bit weird, this. Dave, Dave's going to move up next to Firehead because um, we're sort of on the same level and we can maybe strategize quickly if something was to... Boys happen. will be boys, but I think he's going to go and have a peep. Okay, I'll follow her just to keep us, keep us yeah, safe. Yeah, I'm... I'm... Yeah, I'm actually calling her. I'll tell you what, actually, I'll go up with her. She's sort of holding on to me, one of my uh, Goliath fingers as if to, like, lead me because I'm too scared because I'm disorientated. Yes, yeah, so I reach up and I think it's his finger. <laughs> yeah, she didn't turn around and go, oh, you've got a nice little sticky thumb. It's not me thumb. <laughs> Man's filthy. Pure filth. <sighs> Can you go do this in a different time, you two? Hey, I didn't say nothing. What? Dear, come on, you big early bastards. This is so I'm massive. Going to peep. Uh, yes, <laughs> I'd like to have a peep. That is a peep okay. with my eyes looking, nothing else. So we've got Figgy and Mojo going up towards the entrance of this cavern. Apparently, or... uh, and me. Dragging in with yes, me. Yes, right. By his fingers. Yes. Okay. So, um, luckily, even if you don't have dark vision, because mm. of the natural light in this cavern, it's quite easy to see your surroundings. Um, as, you get, <clears throat> as you get closer towards the entrance, you can start to see that this is quite a vast area of this cave. Um, it is probably a good kind of, I'm going to say 100, 120 feet wide, maybe. Um, and it's a good kind of 60 or 80 feet deep, maybe even more. There's a couple of things that strike you. There is off to the right-hand side, a large body of water 
Now you can't quite see what it is, but it looks like there is a natural forming body of water within this open cavern in this cave. It's slightly more concerning at the moment is at the very far end, are four, large, uh, four small creatures, um, all kind of gathered around these cages. Now, within the cages, there are a good kind of four or five of them at the end. You can start to see, because these creatures outside of the cage are only about three or four feet high, so they're quite small, so you can see beyond them. There are other figures within these cages. Um, most of them are silent. Um, from what you can see, most of them appear to be alive, but they're all very small as well. They're all kind of huddled together. They're all kind of um, sitting down, kind of knees up to the chest, kind of keeping themselves closed off. And these other creatures that almost look a little bit draconic are kind of, I suppose, milling about around these cages, talking to themselves, talking to each other, as well as kind of prodding what it is that's in these cages occasionally. And they keep staring and looking at this body of water like they're expecting something to happen. And they kind of run back to each other and say something else in a language you're not familiar with. And then you kind of see them look over. They look very nervous. They look very anxious from what you can see. I do speak draconic. Would I be able to kind of drop in on what they're discussing see if they are in fact speaking that tongue? Um, too far away. Well, so if you were to move up to where, or, or a little bit nearer to where figured if in the others are standing, you could probably catch hints of what they're saying. Um, so what, what you kind of pick up is um, the odd word here and there, because there is an echo in the cavern because of the acoustics. You can hear a few words and phrases and you hear things like, the time is close and he comes soon and we must be ready for him and things like that. Mm. Well, I'll re relay that to the group. Um, As I'm already not. <laughs> Maybe you know a time in the pub. <laughs> well, so I imagine this is the... Uh, but uh, it's also I think we prepare ourselves a bit of combat. Uh, yeah. mm. I suggest well, I don't know if there might be any idea to head straight into these guys, try and cut them off before this uh, this big brute comes along. Give it a numbers advantage potentially. That sounds like a plan. Um, is there any way of reaching them without going into the water? So these creatures up ahead, um, the area is very much open plan. There are a handful of stalagmites that litter the cavern, but most of them are closer to your end than their end. So you could probably sneak maybe an extra... 10, 15 feet closer, but you would still be a lot further away from them than you'd probably want to be. If you're trying to kind of get up close and do a sneak attack, you'd still have quite a distance to cover. I was more thinking of, if we, from where we are, is there like a clear path to go to them? Was it like land, water, them? So the, the water is off to the right hand side and they are directly in front of you. So, I mean, you could literally run straight ahead and charge into them if you wanted to. Um, I think that's what I'm going to probably go in. Like full on gore. Because <laughs> like, that's... What? That is one of my things I can do. Mm -hmm. is um, goring wash immediate, immediately after you use a dash. Oh, that's when I dash. So the, clo the closest these things are is probably about 60 or 70 feet as well. Yeah, I'll go to the nearest one at 60 feet. 
with my and just dash and just try and go him with my horn. You're just gonna go run straight into them. Oh yeah, just full on. Just as soon as um, I got told that let's try and get off and done with. <laughs> I'm just there, just <laughs> ball in a china shop. No pun intended, and just go them. <laughs> Are they wearing okay. red? <laughs> um, their skin is red. Oh, there we go. Oh, that just that just aggravates <laughs> me more. Just makes me want to. Oh, the little <laughs> So, um, is that just like a melee attack you need to roll for them? Um, yeah. So, make one melee attack as a bonus action. Oh, come on. Oh. Hey, mine got that. We both could have done that at the same time. We could have clashed heads around. Ready, ready. There we go, and then both of us just going to start going to shoot. <laughs> um, 12 plus 7. So, this is 19. Yeah, yeah, more than enough. Um, so, that's 1d6 plus 4, my horns. That is 9 points of gore damage. Gore. Okay. So, um, yeah, you don't waste any time. As soon as you know you've got your opening, you rush as fast as you can across this open cavern. As you do so, this small draconic creature turns towards you just at the last second to see you coming towards it, and you impale your horns through its midsection, tearing straight through its stomach, out the other side and it lets out like a scream and then its arms collapse to its side and it dies and that has attracted the attention of its compadres so i'm gonna do this again yep i'd regret nothing so this one right here is the one that you kill Blet, and we'll roll for initiative again. Oh man, be better. Yes, oh, it's a 21 with initiative. Oh, that's good. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Oh, oh. I rolled really well, but I'm minus four. <laughs> I will really go and I got me. no initiative. Bear with me, bear with me. Okay. Oh. I feel like yeah. somebody's going to come um, out of the water. Oh, God. Guy lives in water. At 24. 22. Out. Uh, I'm 21. 20. So I'm just behind Dave. Yeah, I'm just behind Out. Dave. Fire 24. Dave. 22. 22. And then... Mojo 21. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. About 15. 19. 15. Yes. Fucking hell, Figgy. 15? Yeah. You lot stop rolling so fucking well, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Christmas. Um, I, roll, I rolled a 19. But... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Um, and then, yeah, uh, miscellaneous. Uh, 13 for me, please. Okay. So everyone did pretty well. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. I think that's the case. Then it's fired first. Cool. Uh, fired will run up to run top ways up up to that little peak thing there the little rock yeah it should make it it's got 35 minutes and then he'll take a short ball pop at the um actually it's going to go for the the thingy on the right uh which you will get advantage of because he hasn't in the combat yet so uh yes that one yes. yeah and so the roll uh, hopefully my roll Good. Uh, that is good. That is a uh, crap. What's the modifier? Uh, 
it's a 23 for 25 25 yeah yeah that's enough <laughs> cool and uh so uh it is 5d6 because it is a sneaky sneak get it right this time and the modifier is four so uh it is uh 22 damage nice yeah love my rogue boy and then i'll just use my bonus cunning action to just just tuck away behind the rock okay um so yeah this one uh from seto's attack it's kind of attention is focused towards all of you, but it's not focused enough to not see this arrow coming towards it. So it manages to pierce it quite well. Uh, it is wearing some light armor though, so it does do a good hit, but it's still standing, it's still there. Um, Dave. <clears throat> Dave's gonna go uh, straight down the middle with the dash action. So doubling his distance to 60 feet altogether. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm still, all right. Yeah, cool. And uh, I'm going to, because I'm not in range for melee, I will use an arrow, shoot an arrow. And uh, is, who's that? Who's the other token? Is that Seto? This one here is, yeah. Is he within range? Is he within five five feet? Uh, he enemy. is probably about 10, 15 feet. God damn. Ron, well, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 15 to shoot that one in the middle. Yeah, that hits. Okay, cool. Out, out, kick. 1d6. <laughs> Uh, so four piercing damage altogether. Okay. And that be my turn. Okay. Um, so Mojo is next. Um, right. I'll move up towards where um, Dave is because uh, with me 40 feet, as close as that will take me. Out there. Yeah, I'll throw my. Uh, is twenty feet going to hit if I throw my javelin? I'm uh, sorry, my my spear rather. My javelin thirty feet, but I'm just wondering if I can get away with my spear. Um. So you could hit this one in the middle quite comfortably. Yeah, that's the one I'm going to go for. Yeah. Or this one on the right hand side. Uh, I'll hit the one in the middle. I'll try okay. to. Um, so I will throw my javelin. Uh, not my javelin, rather, my spear. Sorry. Right. Okay. And that is. Spear. Uh, 17 to hit. 17 is fine. Yeah. Yeah. And damage. Seven points of damage on that one. And again, I will rage for, okay. uh, for the next turn. Uh, yeah. I would yeah, like to rage. Cool. Um, so the spear goes flying through the air with such force and such ferocity that it manages to pierce through, similar to Seto's horns on the other one, one side of this creature and through the other. As it does so, it kind of looks down at the spear in disbelief, lodged into its chest, and it falls to the floor, dead. Oh, cool. So, um, where are we next? I think Seto's turn again. Yep. I'm going to go... <laughs> Use my um <sighs> goring rush. Oh no, I'd dash dash for a minute. Oh, just move. Uh, that's by looks. Um, 
That'll go up to the, the one next in the bigger cage. <laughs> While walking, I'm just getting more and more angry and just adrenaline's pumping. Clutching my battle axe with two hands. I'm just going to go swing. Is it 11 plus 7? Yeah, 18 is enough. So that's 1 d10. That is 13 points of slashing damage. Okay, cool. And now will be my turn. Figgy. Can I go 25 feet straight up, please? No, 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 straight up. Up. Oh, up. Oh, okay. Well, I don't want to go towards them, but I reckon something's coming out of that water. And I'm not going to get, by the time I get to the cold bowls, they're going to be dead. So I'm going to wait. <laughs> He's got a point. Yeah. Oh, she's got a point. No, you know, it feels to be Bob. Right. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to wait because I'm just set up for being really slow. Now, I'm going to assume that one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm within 60 feet of the fella on the right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. In that case, I'm going to say, Oi, you look down at my boots. They used to be your mother. Like <laughs> 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 Why are you doing skeletal stuff? Well, it, it's vicious mockery. I mean, what do you want? I know, but um, and you're using you, skeletal uh, Yeah, wisdom saving throw, please. Using <laughs> uh, skeletal means vicious mockery. Oh, uh, eighteen. Bitch. Ooh. I don't even, nineteen on the dice. I don't even think you take half. Uh, or take the damage, they have disadvantage on the next take, it makes full next time. No, fuck all. Man, that hurt. Well, sorry, boys. Just have to put out with my warm bosoms. Uh, and that's going to be figgy for this turn. He should have been just swing them at him and knock them out. Well, if I could ever fucking get there, it'd be great. <laughs> I like the fact that I managed to put myself at the front of the flipping queue, and I'm still fucking at the back. Well, what, it's, a shame that, it's a shame that me and uh, Seto can't do um, like a double move by like grabbing hold of one of these things, throwing it in your direction, and then like baseball, you just go <laughs> knock, send them knock them flying. Yeah, anything's possible. Oh, do, you know, do you know what? No, do you know what? What I can do is I'm gonna go. Yeah, then, boys, if you do really well, I'm gonna give you. Uh, my nice warm bosom all night, and I'm going to give bardic inspiration to Mojo because okay. he's the one. The <laughs> fear in your eyes. Oh no! What do you mean? Oh no, Mojo! Oh, what, what's no. going on? Oh no! Someone tell me what the fuck's going on. Don't worry so you've about been it. inspired, right? So you get whatever you choose, attack wise, yeah, or saving throw. You get a d6 or is it a d8? I've given you a d6 on all ability checks, attack rolls, and saving throws for the next 10 minutes. Okay. So if you roll yeah, shit, buddy. roll a d6 and add it on to whatever you rolled on your d20. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Figgy. <laughs> what did we say about the Figgy? Fear in your eyes. <laughs> it was yeah, a big right. time. Yeah, when she starts flashing her fingers, that's when I start getting a bit fearful. <laughs> um, Especially with them yeah. nails of hers. That is my turn. <laughs> so claustrophobic's turn. Perfect. Okay, can I head to... Uh, where do you want to move, sorry? Uh, perfectly, please. As as far as I can go upwards in 30 feet. Oh, no, uh, upward, like, like right. from my perspective. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 
kind of fit next to uh, the gear box possible. Um, uh, quick question. I might as well ask this before I like, do it to make sure it's actually legal. Uh, um, am I able because Am I able to change into a human? Because I do have something called a uh, called a wild shape, uh, but I don't know if humans are too complex a creature to change into. So I have uh, CR one half. Uh, wild wild shapes normally supposed to be. An animal, I believe. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not got anything about changing into a human if you're a different race. So it would have to be a, a creature of some sort. Okay, no problem. Then. In that case, what I'm going to do is I want to prepare for the listing on. Uh, let's see what is in almost like a. Macaulay Culkin style. I uh, want to put down a few like tracks to put it down. Uh, right. um, Ray. Every time. Yeah. What's the matter with you? Huh? What's the matter with you? What's hey, what's the matter with you? Was, huh? that, was that Ray's chewing I could hear? Yeah. Hey. Get out of here. Huh? Get out of here. With your goddamn noise. Sorry. I'll make your ass feel sorry. I knew. Uh -huh. I wasn't even looking at the screen. I knew straight away that was Ray. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Am I able then just to show, throw like a shield in front of me to make a little like slippery obstruction uh, that might slightly trip up the thing or slow it down? Uh, because at this moment I can't really do anything else. Or is that um, too convoluted? You you could. What what kind of um? What spell were you looking to do? Or I was just going to put down like a shield I have or something to kind of trip it up slightly. Um, yeah, I mean, you can, you can, if you've got a shield or something like that with you, you can kind of try and plant it into the ground and create some sort of barrier or obstacle if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, because I have like a metal shield, so I was going to just place it like sleek side down, maybe a little. Slip hazard. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Do you think it would be really possible to slip on it if I spray a slippery shield on the floor? If you're doing some ice floor as well. I mean, you can you can try, um, and and something might might happen. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. That's right. I'll just uh, chuck the shield uh, in front of me and see if it creates a sort of slipping mechanism. Okay. To put it at a disadvantage. Okay, cool. Um, we will say there is a, a shield just in front of you here, then for now. That's cool. Sure. sure, thank you. And that'll be everything for me. Okay. So um, it is these two's turn at the top here. Um, so the one next to Seto is going to try and, well, it's got a small dagger, so it's going to pull it out and try and shiv Seto with that. Um, four. Mm, 21 to hit. That hits. But they are quite weak, so it's just going to do four piercing damage. Down to two. And the other one is going to run across and do the same thing. They have uh, pack tactics, so it's going to get advantage on its to hit roll. Uh, first one was a 15 plus 21 was the first one. 
second one was a 10 so <laughs> that hits yeah um so that's another five piercing damage down to what three or two two, two. Now, as they do that, there's a couple of things that happen. So from behind or to the left of where you're standing, you can hear a bit of a commotion, a bit of a shuffling. And as you turn to where this noise is coming from, you can then see there is a very small hole in the wall from which another three of these things appear. Now, this one here is going to move up slightly and is going to try and throw, well, I say throw, it's called a sling. So it's going to kind of like Dennis the Menace kind of thing, try and hit Mojo with a stone okay. with this sling. Um, so that is going to be for 21 to hit. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be five bludgeoning damage from the sling. Fuck <laughs> off! These other two are going to run towards the group near the bottom. Um, so one of them is going to go. Mm, 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 mm. And the other one, like so. Quick question um, for the PM. Uh, quick question. Because uh, I'm raging, do I still take half of that five damage? Oh, if you are, yeah. So that would only yeah, be two fine. damage. Two? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, then they are. Let's see. Okay. So one at the bottom has a spear and he's going to try and throw it at Fayed. Now it is out of range, so it's going to get disadvantage on the throw. Uh, so first one is nine, second one is 13. So both no doubt miss. Uh, yeah, also I was I was hidden, but I don't think I was hidden. So, well, but yeah, it comes underneath my arm class, so it's fine. Okay. Oh, good. Um, and the other one will do the same thing at claustrophobic. So, well, I got a natural one on the first roll anyway, so <laughs> never mind. Safe to say the spears miss completely. Um, so that is it for them. However... Uh, you can also hear a bit of a rumble coming from somewhere within the cave. You're not quite sure where it's coming from, but you almost hear like a loud guttural noise and there's like a rumbling within the cave that starts to happen as well. And we go back to the beginning. So, um, Thayad, it's your turn. Cool. Uh, I will uh, take a pop at the closest thingy my bob to the little group at the back um yeah. and because he's already taken his shot i'll just hit him with a standard attack no sneaking uh so roll to hit oh. <laughs> it's a, a, a a 10 a 10 is a miss yeah that's fine um cool but i will uh, i will i'll tuck behind that little rock and, and attempt to hide uh using my cunning action cool okay and that's me dave hmm yeah. all right, all right. <clears throat> head towards that first cage can i confirm that there are children in these cages uh yes now that you're closer, you can see that there are lots of children within these cages. And what lock is on the cage? Because they look quite basic. Yeah, it's nothing fancy at all. It's just kind of a standard padlock on each of the doors. 
I'd like to pick that padlock and release the children. Okay. Oh, I'm covered in blood. <laughs> Let's move that out of the way. Um, <laughs> this is wrong. Oh, it's, it's a trap. The crimson, it moves. So I've got th thieves' tools, mm -hmm. which I'm proficient with. So, what am I rolling? I believe <clears throat> I'm going to double check this. I can't remember either. either it, it's, it a, it's a sleight of hand with your proficiency moment. Yeah, I was going to say I'm pretty sure it's. Well, this is going to be good. <clears throat> Here we go. Disadvantage as well, yeah? Because I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> 11 to pick the lock. You know what? It's, it's a pretty standard weak lock holding the door open. So even though there's a lot of distractions, even though you're a little bit fatigued from travel, you do manage to pick it correctly so that the thing, the clasp opens up on the lock and the door can now be opened. Run children, run for your lives. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how many children come out? Is that like... So in, in that particular one, in the smaller ones, there's probably about four or five in each of them. Um, they are a little bit hesitant they are still kind of all huddled together and a little bit scared because of everything that's going on so they are staying put for now oh i like to hide amongst the children in the cage <laughs> as a bonus <laughs> action my use my cunning action to to use the hide action so roll stealth at <laughs> disadvantage again <laughs> Uh, oh, still, it's all right. This oh, disadvantage. I've got a 20 and an 18, which is my modifier is a 23 to stealth amongst the children. You know, what? I probably would have just allowed it for the sake of hilarity. <laughs> <laughs> There's this grown man huddling in a cage that's barely big enough for these four children. I can imagine Dave being Bang in there going, <laughs> any of you make a peep, well, I'll fucking kill you myself. Now shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Dave's my... <laughs> yeah, that's my... Oh, no, the lock re-fucking... Recloses. Yeah. <laughs> that's if that's if Matt was a beer. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> okay. Um Mojo next. Right. Yep. Yeah, um, right. So I am a friend. So what I'm gonna do for my first attack is I'm gonna fire throw my javelin at the one that's standing just to the right hand side of um Mr. Buttocks. Um yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to launch that mofo with, oh, we have, oh, you know, 18 plus 8, 26 to hit. Well, we know that hit. Yeah. And piercing damage is a nine. Okay. And I will now move to... Uh, what's this one down here that's on his own, sort of in between the two doubles? That, that one this in the one. middle? Yeah, that one, yeah. What's that one? Um, he's very similar to the others, just looks like he hasn't got as much armour or weaponry with him. Well, I'll, I'll go straight up to him then, please. Um, can I just go to the left-hand side of him, please? Um, that's the right-hand side, the other side of him, sorry. Yeah. Just because I don't want them to sneak up behind me. Yeah, I'll take my great hat axe. And we will go for a 11 to hit. Um 11 D6. 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 Yeah. Roll the fucking D6. No meta gaming, thank you. <laughs> Eleven is a miss. You've got fucking bardic inspiration. Oh, you're not, I know, you're not, but at least let me give the DM a chance to tell me if it's a hit or a miss first. Jesus Christ. 
Right, if that's the case, I will go with my D6. Come on, give me a chance, Jay. Jesus, man. What's the matter with you? Oh, you it's so only, pretend it's you knew about up. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, okay, so I've rolled a five on the D6. So, so 16 to hit. Right, so 16 now 16 hits. to hit. 16 right. hits. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> um, right, and for damage on that, we have 10 plus five. Is it 15 damage? Yeah, or 15. Um, that is enough to take him out. These ones are quite oh. frail. These ones are quite weak. Okay. So as you come barreling down with the axe, carves okay. him in half and he drops to the floor. Okay, that will have to be my final turn because I've only got uh, one melee um, attack left and I've got no movement, so that'll have to be me for this round. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, so that is Seto, I believe. Yep. And I'm going to go turn around to the Probably in the cobalt that screamed in pain when he got skewered by the javelin that Mojo threw. <sighs> Again, gl- grasping my axe with two, two hands. Remember Nat 20? Yeah. Nice. Um, for nineteen points of damage. Mm. That strike is enough to cleave his head from his shoulders and take him out completely. So he too is dead. Hello. You are out. I'm gonna go. So I only can do one attack per turn. I'm gonna go use action surge. I'm gonna go attack the one in front of me. Let's try again. That's a 12 plus 7. 21 hits. Yep. So it's just a normal... 19. 19. My math is terrible. Okay. So that's a D10, D10, D10. Um, for 13 points of slashing damage. Mm. Oh, because I'm aging, it's plus two. So that's a 15, sorry. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he managed to spin around and catch this one really, really well, but... He manages to sidestep just that little bit before you manage to actually deal the killing blow. So he's clutching his side. He's just barely grabbing onto the dagger that he has. He's still there, but he's on his way out. All right, go on. Give me your best shot. That'll, that'll be my turn. Okay. Um, well, it's Figgy's turn next. Oh my god, I've been so waiting for this. <laughs> Gotta move away from the water. Right, yeah, move me to within 15 feet of the two that are in bottom left. Do you want to be able to catch them both? Yeah, I'm sure that my 25. I'll do that, then 510. Yeah, so that's definitely 15 between the two of them. Marvellous. <clears throat> and I'm going to stand there. I'm going to pull out uh, uh, my musical instrument. 
Which, which is? I can't remember what I'm carrying now. <laughs> um, Grand piano. Oh, I'm carrying. No, 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 no. <laughs> piano. I am. I am carrying a crossbow violin. Hmm. Um. So I pull it out, and uh, I put. I pull out my little arrow, and I start. Using, so that arrow. That arrow is the actual bow. Yeah. <laughs> so the crossbow is the violin, and the arrow is a bow. It's quite good. And I start, mm. I start strumming away on it. It's squeaky. It's horrible. Um, and then I suddenly strike a chord. And as a chord gets struck, lightning starts to imbue <laughs> yes. around my crossbow. And I let off this huge crackle of noise as this thunder wave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as its way across these two unsuspecting kobolds. Uh, could you make a constitution saving throw, please? I got 18. Man! I don't like these guys. Well, they're parties, so you're going to take half the damage, which is fine, which is pretty pathetic. Uh, you're going to be taking seven points of damage. Dave's <laughs> Dave's in the cage holding on to the side going, ah, we love it here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are hardy people. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as my bonus action, I suppose. Bunch of dumbasses. Get the fuck out. Yeah, that's my bonus action. I've got a 60 feet range. That's, where's 60 feet then? Can 60 feet get me to buttocks? Five, yeah, that only looks about 30, 35. He's only 40. 35. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give, I'll give, uh, uh, I'll, I'll give a, I'll give a little wink and a wave, and I sort of push my bra up, uh, uh, buttocks, and he can have a bardic inspiration as well. Right. Okay. Didn't do that well. Yeah, the buttocks goes. Look at me. I'm. <laughs> um, and that will be me. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, then it is claustrophobic again. Is it? It is. I thought it was an open plan. What? Oh, right, that one was just terrible. I know. Oh. Yeah, that's bad. Yep, I know. I regret nothing. <laughs> you can kill off my character, I'll be happy. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Inspiration. Mm. Was that inspiration for that joke? The inspiration. The inspiration. <laughs> I could have cast that at level two. Nah, nah, that would have been a waste. Okay, so I'm going to use Cool Lightning, uh, so that will summon a Storm Cloud, and I'm going to position that Storm Cloud just over the top of those two little guys uh, down here, so it encompasses both of those legs. Uh, and then, so using that cloud, I'm going to summon a Bolt of Lightning that lands exactly halfway between those two so it encompasses those both and could you give me a dexterity saving throw for both of them please i got a nine. Oh, so you fail against him yeah. <laughs> okay i think it's just women with beards you don't like <laughs> I don't blame him. I, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't date a woman with a beard. Sweet. So, can you give both of them? Every single time it just freaks me out. 
Can you do both of them in a lending of damage, please? Lightning damage. Hmm? And then... <laughs> Just no. And then, as a bonus, is it possible to kick that shield that's at my feet okay. as far over to the water as possible? Because uh, I know it's going to emerge soon. So I want to try and create a few things in its way. Um, yes, how about you do, how about you do a strength check to see how much you can push it towards the water? Eleven. Okay, so I mean it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're talking about thirty feet from where you are to the water, thirty-five feet. So an eleven would probably get it to about halfway around here. Okay. Yeah, so we'll do that. That's all right. Let's kick it over there. And that's really all I can do at this point, so I'll leave it there. Okay, cool. Um, so, in that case, these guys are going to take their turn. So, the one up there with Seto is going to try and hit it with a dagger, or hit him for a dagger. Um, for 23 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Um, so that will be uh, another five damage, but obviously if you're raging, that will go down to two. Um, and then the two down here by Figgy are going to rush her. Yeah, come on, sweeties. And both are going to take an attack because um, they're next to each other. They're going to get advantage with their attack rolls. Uh, so I a shit. The first one, uh, three, seven. First one is going to be a 12 to hit. Oh, that is a miss, darling. Oh, my God. It means a bit harder. I like it rough. Come on. The second one was 21 to hit. Oh, yeah, that definitely does it. <laughs> so that one is uh, four slashing damage from oh him. Oh, my gosh. Now, after they've taken their turn, this rumbling starts to get more and more, well, it gets louder. You can start to feel the cavern shaking, and you can see the water bubbling over. And as you do creature starts to emerge from the water looking something like this oh no it's, it's literally lifted from the show um <laughs> <laughs> no so this is this is a very large creature this is probably about 20 feet high um it is Let's see, I'm just checking one note I made. No, never mind. So it's about 20 feet high. It's got, again, you kind of remember the words from Benny and Bjorn. It's got the body of a walrus. It's got the sharp teeth of a dolphin. It's got many, many legs that look like crab's legs. And you can see it's got these large arms reaching out as well. And as it comes out of the water, it shrieks a really loud, shrill cry. And as it does so, I need you all to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, no oh, way. Yes, I'm good at those. Oh, don't get this on saves. Oh, no, that's all right. Yeah, no, 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 I'll, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. 
Now there is some kind of logic to this. Did anyone get above a 15? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did anyone get above a 10? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyone that got below a 10 is now frightened. So it's kind of based on distance because a lot of you are quite spread out. So most of you would have been safe, but just in case. So yeah, anyone that got below a 10 is frightened. Now it stands there just for a moment. And we go to the next. Let's, oh no, yeah, we do. Um, so next turn, so it's fired to start us off again. Cool. Uh, yeah, I will just, um, I'll pop the bow. I'll attack the, uh, the uh, creature just to, um, just below Figgy to get the bonus. Uh, so I'll do. You want to attack the Figgy? <laughs> yeah, is there anyone oh, about good. bonus? Uh, I uh, I don't roll with advantage. Okay. Um, yeah, I got five, so miss. Okay. And I'm just going to tuck away again and hide like hell now that uh, Vada Johan is here. Cool. Um, it's actually his turn as well. <laughs> um, so he is going to let's see yeah okay let's do this um, so he's going to run up to Claustrophobic. Shit. Poor claustrophobic. Oh no. <laughs> um, now he is so large that even if the shield were there, he would probably be able to scale over that. But uh, he takes four attacks with these crab like legs that are in front of him. Oh, fuck. So don't worry, they don't deal much damage each. Um, so the first one is a 12 to hit. Uh, my armor class is a 12. Does that mean you hit or what does it draw? Yeah. yeah, no, if it's if it's the armor class or higher, it hits. Okay. So if it's a 12, it hits. Right. Um, so that will be uh Nine damage from the first one. Uh, second roll was 17. Mm -hmm. So that will hit. Uh, and that'll be seven damage. Uh, 24 to hit. That's nine damage again. Uh, and the last one was an 11 to hit, so that one will miss. <coughs> He's in potion. <laughs> <laughs> no meta gaming. <laughs> oh, it's all now. Yeah. I just got <laughs> in my throat. Okay, so that is his turn for now. And that takes us to Dave. Hmm. Okay, uh, it looks like there's a mop sticking out of that cage. I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, whilst there's hitting the bones, oh, I'd, I'd like to take a shot at uh, the big evil dude. At, um, what's his name? Vada Johan. Vada Johan. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't oh, bastard. Because I'm hidden, <laughs> I get advantage. 
Oh yeah, fucking would be shit, wouldn't it? Um, fourteen. It's a miss. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, giving away my position by shooting, so I'm just going to go out and be like, follow me, children, and then go to the next cage. If you, what's going on? I uh, know the mop. The mop's in the way. It's a hand. <laughs> <laughs> I moved the blood uh, off of you as well. Yeah. What what kind of is it the same same setup as the other one? Is there the same amount of children in there? Yeah, I, I mean all of the cages have very basic locks because they've basically been put there by these kobolds. So they're not very good mm. with stuff like that. So they just use whatever they could get basically. All right. Um I'm gonna move around the back of that one and uh roll to hide. At disadvantage <laughs> behind the thing, so fifteen to hide. Okay, he cannot see. You. Yes, and that's my turn. Okay, cool. I think rogues are pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you; you're not as boring as a bar of paladin. <laughs> 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 um mojo okay um right uh i'm going to throw my javelin up at the one next to seto to try and hopefully deal enough damage to that will free him up to Start moving down this way. So we have oh, a miss. Ten to hit. Yeah, that's a miss. Yeah. Um, right, that's me only to right. Okay, so I'm gonna have to move closer to something to for melee attack. So um I'll go down to the one near where Figgy is. Squish the ditch. <laughs> and I'll attack that one directly in front of me with my you great attack. You can do it, big bollocks. Cut his fucking head off. I'm going to try, Viggy. Don't worry, my darling. I will do my best. Don't forget you got bardic inspiration. I know. Thank you very much. But now I think you used it. I've used it. No, it's, 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 it's a thing. It's well, there. It's just constantly there. Yeah. Concentration spell, isn't it? No. Oh, okay. Oh, it's just... It's not a spell at all. Oh. 19 to hit on that one. It is a gift. Yeah, that hits. Yep. And for damage, flashing damage, you are going to take... Oh, yeah. There we go. 13 points of damage. Okay. And for my other one... Final attack. Well, 19 to hit. Hits. And finally, please be good damage. Flashing damage. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. Yeah. Uh, there we go. You got uh, 10 on that one. It'll do. 10 hits. Okay. Cool. Um, so Mojo is on a roll because he manages to, I don't know whether it's the third or fourth one, but take out this kobold. Yeah. Here you go, Figgy. Thanks. Now kill this other one. I'm going to get that big wormy fella with the de- with the teeth like a dolphin and all the crab's legs. I would do, but I've just had all my turns. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> 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 sorry, <Crap>. sorry. <laughs> next. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So next <laughs> is Seto. Yep. And I'm gonna go swing at the cobalt in front. 
For 25 to hit? Yeah. So, one D10. For nine points of slashing damage? Yeah. Um, I mean, you and Mojo at this point are having a competition to see who can take out more kobolds than each other because you've now taken out your next one as well. Um, Ghibli thing going on there. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Already, am I sixty feet away from sixteen? The BBG or the other or Cobalt? Definitely sixty away from the Cobalt. Um... Just out of range of this guy. All right, so I'm going to go use dash all the way to the kobold. Get a gore. And get a gore. Yeah. Oh. Can I go gore him? Mm hmm. Because I can class that as a bonus action. Oh. Oh. Motherfucker. <laughs> Sticking Robbie butt. <laughs> As he hits him, I just like waves to the cover. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going wash. Yeah, and just popping his head out of out the cave is a, a, a look like Joey Styles go, uh, going, oh my God. <laughs> so let's roll f- if it hits. That's an 18 plus 7. So that's definitely going to hit. So that's 1d6 plus 4. That is 6 points of damage. Okay. Cool. So it's still alive. Um, Managed to catch it, but it's a bit of a glancing blow. So it kind of steps away as soon as it feels the horns pierce its skin and clutches its stomach and is now looking a little bit panicked that it's got these three heroes standing in front of him. You know what to do, Figgy. Yeah, run away and go attack the crabby legged dolphin guy. Well, before you do that, he's taking a legendary action. Oh, bollocks, man. So you can see the three of you all gathered around there. So he is going to step away from very injured, claustrophobic. And he rears up and he breathes out this disgusting fish licorice breath of his. Uh And... (laughs) Close your legs. What have I told you? <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> Why wouldn't I? <laughs> True. My there girl a... the best person to go be filtered. Horrible, horrible stench. And you can almost visibly see like this mist coming out from his mouth as he does so. So can the three of you, and I'm going to do the same for the kobold, make a constitution saving throw? Yes. May I ask what the damage is? What the damage is? It's going to be cold damage. Cold? Okay. Yes. Um, That 20, that makes it 26. Okay. I've got a 14. I've got 17. Constitution? 22. Okay. Strong. So all of you pass except for the kobold. Um, so it's going to be 4d6 cold damage. Oh, well, he did. Kobold's uh, dead. I think. Yep, he's dead. I can't so, <laughs> so as as this 
disgusting stench comes out from its mouth. It's like a frigid kind of horrible kind of feeling that creeps up your spine as you feel it come towards oh, you. He's frigid. I saw a couple of nights with me again over there. So <laughs> oh, I was about to say, make a comment like that. He's perfectly timed. He got in there. He got in there. <laughs> so <laughs> it would normally be 14 damage, but because you all passed, you take seven damage instead. Oh, yeah. See, Ma, tell you what. My boyfriend used to have uh, worse breath than you. Trust me. Yeah, I like to think I was partially uh, immune to that because I spent a lot of time with Figgy. You see, so I'm used to the smell. Well, you are you are you are immune to cold anyway, Mojo. So you're only half of that. Ah, very good point. So yeah, yeah, half for seven. So am I taking four or three? Well, we're we'll round down, so you say three. Hey, Matt's a nice DM. I, I'm, I'm not round up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yes, it is now Figgy's turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, girl. Right, mm-hmm. so you are fishy breath. I mean, I haven't really had much of a chance to do this, but now is the time for me to start to wing you my hammer. Oh, I've been waiting. Oh, dear, it's been nice to see you. You're actually going to get here. I've been waiting. I've been waiting to swing this bloody hammer. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Um. So, it come here, then, lizard lips that's fucking... Or is he dolphin lips or walrus face? Oh, fucking no. Eat my hammer, you little bitch. <laughs> uh, eating my hammer on a 26 to hit. It hits. I've been waiting for this. So we are going to do a hammer damage. And my hammer damage will be a magnificent shit. Uh, will be a, mag- <laughs> will be a magnificent <laughs> Chill off. Tend to hit. But while while we're while we're doing while we're doing the 10 points of damage with the hammer, we're also gonna cast um or oh, let's go with thunderous smite. So you are going to take 2d6 uh, thunder damage. Uh, that's another seven points of damage. Uh, could you make a strength saving throw? Um, probably can. More than likely. I'm expecting you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. It was a one. Um, oh, wow. So, uh, but... Yeah. but I'm using legendary resistance. <laughs> of course you are. Of course you are. <laughs> well, during all of this then, and because I can, and it's the first time I've actually managed to swing my hammer. So I've had a 10, I've had a 7. And I, I do believe, I do believe that I'm going to throw a smite in there as well. So let's... And on the smite, could you take another 13 points of damage, please? Yes. I've been so waiting to do that. Yes. See, that's why I'm a paladin. I only chose the bar so that you guys could get some inspiration from my boobs. But I fancied eating something with my hammer. It was fun. Understandable. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. And, and, and I've seen it. And I only used one spell. That's nice. I've still got three spells left. Wow. Yeah. Beat some shit up. Um, and yeah, that's me, Mr. Dean. Oh, um, claustrophobic. Okay, quick question. So, as I am frightened, what does that mean for me? Um, it imposes a couple of the penalties. So, essentially, if you're frightened, you have pretty sure disadvantage on ability checks. As well as attack rolls, you uh, yeah, ability checks and attack rolls, mm-hmm. and you can't willingly move closer to the creature that's causing you fear. Yeah, that's it. Sweet. Okay, I'm fine on doing that. Uh, cool. And um, second question, because uh, I just remembered that I have a healing potion. 
Uh, does that count as a bonus action, taking that, or is that a full action? Um, for the purposes of this, I will say you can do it as a bonus action. Okay. So in that case, uh, I might quickly take that before I do anything else. Uh, I'll speak to the healing potion that I have. And is that a, how much does that restore me? Is that a full or is that a set number? Um, it is one, no, 2d4 plus two. So 2d4 and then add two to that. All right. So that is five. Okay. Cool. One, two, eight. Then. Okay, what do I have to do to? Then I will. I shall use a I shall use a tidal wave on this creature action that I did for it. Uh, Yeah, so I think I'll use tidal wave on this big guy. Uh, so can you roll a dexterity throw for me, please? Save me for the Twelve. Sweet. Okay, that works for me. So, should you... That would be 17 bludgeoning damage. And apparently you just knock the creature prone. And then, when I've done everything, that will be the end of me. Oh my turn. Okay, cool. Um, so... It takes us to fire again. Cool. I'll pop out from behind the rock, pop the bow, and uh, take a shot at uh, Vali Johan. Uh, it is a 15. That hits. Cool. And uh, he's got people around him. So. I'll do my sneak attack, so 5d6. Uh, plus, ooh, did that wrong, actually. Uh, so that hits for, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just two modifier. Is it possible? Yeah. Uh, it hits for 21. Okay. And then I will use my cunning action to hide back behind the rock. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um, so it is Vadiohan's turn. Um, he's obviously going to stand back up from being prone. Um, and he is going to try and attack Figgy with these crab legs of his. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, he is. Uh, so first one is 22 to hit. Fuck, yeah. Uh, so seven damage from the first one. Cool. Next one is 17 to hit. That's a miss. Okay. Next one, 13 to hit. 
That's a move. Next one is 19 to hit. Well, that hits. And that is five damage. The 12 over Marvellous. Well, bugger me sideways and call me Cyril. Um, yeah. I like seafood. <laughs> that's, uh, that's it for him for now. So, it's Dave. Dave's going to draw his butt. <laughs> Take a shot. Uh, for uh, 23, please. 23 is all good. Oh, yeah. And that is uh, 16 piercing damage. Okay. And we can restore as a bonus action. He's going to take the dash action and charge. Okay. The kids are all relieved that that miserable bastard's leaving them alone. <laughs> You're charging like right up to him. Uh, towards his like trying to flank him as far as I can get on on that side yeah yeah uh, but can I be like 10 feet away behind him at one up yeah that's better yeah yeah that's cool and I'm finished okay uh mojo okay uh yeah i'll go just to the side of where figgy is um literally directly in front thank you very much uh okay so where's my great at um, right we have 18 to hit that one hits yeah and we are here Damage. And uh, there's eight slashing damage on roll number one. Okay. Second one to hit is. A, no, that's not going to hit. It's the 13. 13 to miss. Yeah. Okay. Right. Straight into the final one. Oh, that's better. Uh, 23. 15 plus 8. Yep, that hits. And damage on that one is was that 11 plus 5 is 16 slashing damage, please. And that's my uh, my turn. Okay. Hat trick that time. So, Vardy Johan is looking very upset. <laughs> So from mm -hmm. underneath that saucy little hat that he's wearing, he pulls a flute, which is made of children's bones. <laughs> and he starts <laughs> to play a tune on it, which gives Figgy a run for her money. Could everyone who is within 20 feet, which is basically... Uh, which is basically everyone but fired. <laughs> um, could they make a wisdom saving throw? Oh, relying on my wisdom's not that bad. Yeah, no, my my I've got minus one on my wisdom. <laughs> oh, oh, that's dude. beautiful. Oh fuck, twenty-one. <laughs> Mm, 17. Uh, uh, nine. 17. Okay. Eight. Dan has disappeared. That means he's dead. He, right. He's um, now dead. Give, give, give me your rolls again, Seto. 
And I got um, 21. No, Jay. Nine. Figgy. 17. Claustrophobic. 17. Okay. So, everyone but Seto. Seto takes no damage. He manages yes. to resist the pull from this flute. But everyone else takes... Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 16 psychic damage. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, half of 16, what do you want me to say? It's eight, isn't it? Oh, yeah. no, it's psychic damage, not, not... What? You take full damage. Take full damage. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Do I need to make a save or anything? Yeah, wisdom saving throw. Right. Pray to God you roll well. That's... Yeah, Hmm, what's the modifier on that? Uh, okay, 19. Okay, you, you're okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're okay. Um, what the fuck was the DC on that then? 18? Yes. Oh, what? <laughs> Damn. Yes, 18. It's Trump <laughs> card. Um, so... It's Seto's turn next. Yep, I'm gonna go move up to Dolphin Boy. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, because I'm still raging, I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna go use Reckless. Which gives me advantage. Mm -hmm. If I'm correct. Gives you advantage, but gives him advantage on you as well. Yes. And so... But don't forget you still got that D6. Oh, don't worry. I'm, I don't... I won't forget. No better gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, Mojo could have used the D6 for his... Uh, um, right. Yeah. Right. Wait. Does that... Wait. Does that mean I quit on a 19? Why, well, have you got a champion? No. Um, I chose a um, superior... Battle... Um, superior technique? Yeah. Not technique, it? but I'm the battle master I chose. But there's something here I thought. Oh, no. All right. So that's 26 to hit. Hit. I'm going to go use my superiority die. And... If and use golden attack, so, so I get four D eight, plus the D ten, Let's roll for normal. That's seven points of slashing. Now, before D8, on my superiority die. That is 25 on the support, superiority die. And he is goaded, so it will get disadvantage on anyone else except for me. The four D8 that you roll. Is it just one D8 extra? Um, four D8 extra support superiority die. Does that sound right, Syria? Because you've gone down that route before. Oh, sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, champ. Um, when oh, when you've it? done battle master or whatever it was, when when you were playing. 
Well, you know, you know, when we were doing the campaign and you had your superiority die. Yeah. You get a pool of die, but you roll mm-hmm. one, don't you? You don't roll all four for the extra attack. Yeah, yeah. You just use one at a time, and then you oh, expand sorry. it until rest. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'll be doing that. Do apologise. I've missed it as well. How dare you? He's using all four. Yeah, feel bad. <laughs> um, so that was a seven. Sorry. Okay. Um, so that's fourteen altogether. Okay, that's fine. And he is going. You should get disadvantage on that for deception. Oh, um, anything else? No, that's my turn. Okay, Figgy. Okie dokie. So, uh, I does believe that people are getting all sorts of squishy now, and I don't like getting squishy. Can I move around? And put myself between, like, without leaving melee range, and put myself around between um, walrus, crabby, dolphin man, uh, and uh, or the claustrophobic. Um, we could say you kind of slip in that way so you don't technically yeah, no it's away. fine I'm well used to slipping into places I'm <laughs> meant to ask for that all the time not a problem so I just, I just wanted to put myself in the way I can't really do anything else for him at the moment um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand there and really disturbingly rub myself in front of this thing <laughs> And I am going to give myself back. Uh, oh. oh, it would have put pleasure in herself. We'll give her healing power. Jesus Christ. This is it. I mean, yeah. Oh, God. I'm the and <laughs> What I can think of is ODB. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bam! Um, yeah, I'm, g- I'm going to give myself back uh, 15 hit points. Uh, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, what I am trying to check on, that is an action. Yes, that is an action. So, in my bonus action, I can't cancel that. I can do another bardic inspiration. Well, isn't that wonderful? Uh, let's go with as he's actually popped out from behind his cage. We'll go for Dave. And I go, Dave, lovely Dave. Have a look. Thank you very much, Dave. And have some bardic inspiration. There you go. <laughs> Thanks very Bye much, Dave. Figgy. Cheers. That's on Dave. Someone will tell. Um, and that's, that's going to be me. That's going to be me. So, um, claustrophobic. You need to make a death saving throw. Oh, no is... way. Oh, shit, he's dead. Well, not yet, not yet. Um, I couldn't offer him anything. I can't touch him. All all, all, all of my healing is hands-on. You can make a medicine check to stabilise. No, because I would have left melee range and I wasn't exactly Mm. helping. Well, he was on disadvantage because I'd done golden attack. I know, but it's... Yeah. You don't want to risk it, I understand. I had 12 hit points left, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Right, so what is the death saving throw I've never done before? Roll a, um, roll a D20. Okay. Roll a D20. And hope that it's a 20 or at least above a 10. Above a 10. Oh, 
14. Yay, one success. Yes. <laughs> he lives. Ah, it'd be all right for another couple of rounds. <laughs> so that's that's basically all you can do at the moment. Um, if you get three successes, you're kind of back on one HP. If you get three not successes, you're dead. You, you're dead. Yeah. Um, so. Um, but I wish I had helium word. Fired. Hmm. Um, uh, I could possibly do something to assist um, claustrophobic. Oh, wait, no, I can't. No, forget that. I'll just go for a hit. Um, I'll jump out at the shadows and, and pop the bow at uh, Father Johan. And... It is, uh, oh, it is a 15. Yeah, 15. 15's okay. Yeah. And I'll do my sneak attack. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, it's 25. Okay. 25 damage. And <laughs> I just quick. I just hide away again behind the rock. <laughs> okay. Um it is Father Johan's turn. So, uh, because he's goaded into attacking Seto, that is exactly yes, what yes. he's going to do. So, he's going to attack four times, once for 17. Hits. I'm just going to roll all the to hits first. So, that's one. So, next one is 18. Hits. Natural 20. Oh! Yeah, it hits. Shit. Two natural 20. <laughs> no yeah. way. Yeah, it hits. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to add this up cumulatively. So three. Really high. Nine. 10, 11. 16. 17, 18. Yeah. 22, then plus the modifiers, 34 damage. Half, because I'm raging. 17 damage. Oh, just as well. Just as well. Barbarian. <laughs> Taking the hits. And that's his turn. So Mojo's next. Yeah. Oh, you are no, there. Oh, no. no, Dave is next. Dave is next. Dave, Dave's next. Uh, with my 30 feet of movement, can I get to Kloss Trophobic? You can. Yeah, quite easily. Excellent. Day. And I'd like to try and stabilize him. Okay. Uh, medicine check at disadvantage. <laughs> oh, that's such a shame. For take it. Let's do anything. Well, I don't think it does. I mean, I I need to double check because I don't. I think it's you got to get over a ten for it to be successful. Yeah, I think it's a general rule. The, the DM can set a D, whatever DC he wants. <clears throat> yeah, of course, but I mean the general. It does actually stipulate that it's a ten if you don't set anything, but it's up to you. Yeah, I mean, I I would say it would be the same as kind of death saving rolls, so it would have to be above a ten to stabilize. Okay. Can I use a bonus action to get out the healing potion if he hasn't already used it and force feed it to him? And uh, yeah, surprise potion. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Surprise. Surprise, surprise motherfucker. Surprise, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. <clears throat> so what is it? It's uh, it's, 
It's a minor, <laughs> isn't it? Is it a minor? Uh, yes, it was 2d4 plus 2. Yeah, that's it. Oh, come on, d4 is right. Uh, that is uh, an 8. Heal him for 8. Oh, you're alive. Didn't I use my potion earlier? Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. And I got All right. Yeah, that... five points. Oh, that didn't happen then. Um... <laughs> no, you got you got two you got two potions from I the think mayor. I gave one. Yeah, but I gave one to Piggy. Astrophobic, and then I gave one to Piggy as well. Um... Um... <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what. I will. <laughs> I will use his body to hide under. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very nice. So let me roll. To Even if you are dying, I'm, you're going to be useful. I'm sorry, I can't help you, but you can help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, I fucking don't hide at all. I get... Um, Oh, uh, oh, I, oh, yeah, I only get no. an eight, an eight to mm. hide, to sell. Um, I'm going to say because you're quite close to where the battle is and because um, Claustrophobic's body is quite limp and like basically, you know, dead weight, you mm. can't quite position him in a way that would obscure you fully. So, mm. yeah, you're, you're not completely hidden, but you kind of half hidden all right yeah that's that's cool so my my turn was completely useless <laughs> as i just skipped dave uh yeah done okay uh now it's my joe's go yep okay right great right, axe again ah, here we go uh, is a 22 to hit? Flashing damage. Oh, gone under there. What have we got here? Oh, 11 points of damage. I oh, want a nice big one. Next one. Is a 17 to hit? That hits. And the damage we have, or uh, like an eight point of damage. Come on, man. And the third and final. Oh, nice. 24 to hit. Shame I ain't that in the hit the damage, because <laughs> that would have been quite nice. And the final one on there is 16 damage, just the highest I've got. Okay. Um, tell us how you do it. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck, yes. Well, I'm just kidding. Well, sorry, buttocks, but <laughs> Gimli wins this round. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, literally, what I'm going to do is while he's uh being distracted by figgies, uh, whatever figgy does, <laughs> and um, by uh, the fellow Goliath, uh, to my right, and now I go under. And just repeatedly, just constantly, just ferociously keeps slacking away uh, his midsection. Still, it all opens up and all these entrails start pouring out before, uh, as he falls down, I just then bury my axe into his head. Mm. Right through his hat. And, uh, hey. yeah, he is no more. Just, oh. just, just a quick question after now we've beaten the BBEG. Dan, when you rolled your medicine check, did you use my bardic inspiration? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man every time oh, he could have gets saved him. <laughs> oh. then again he wouldn't be a Dan character without some level of disappointment yeah, exactly. <laughs> you true. know it's, it's kind of like a trademark we have it yeah. with Bob and we've got it with Dave it is so. true, yeah. is I'm true. so glad I'm so glad uh, that I chose uh, I chose Bard <laughs> different though so. With the flurry of attacks from Mojo, yeah. um, after the final, final strike, 
this giant walrus dolphin crab turns to cream on the floor. And at that, um, he is no more. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, have, you have a cavern full of children in cages. Well, first things first, I'm going to run over to claustrophobic and I'm going to rub him and give him five <laughs> points. So I'm going to rub him nicely. Hey, he says lay hands on. So I'm going to, <laughs> so I'm going to caress his horns um, and give him five points of healing back because that's what I've got left. I think, uh, I think it's the rogue's jobs to go and release the children, pick the locks. I mean, you could probably just smash them, smash the cages to pieces. But yeah, but that would probably oh, get yeah, the kids help. even more with that aggression. Any though, cage, yeah, we're not going to help. That needs to be, you know, broken into. Um, question for the DM: Could I use? Um, I've got a vial on me. Could I, an empty jar thing on me? Could I collect some of the cream and take it as just kind of like proof that we just, you know, yeah. what we did? Ask you yeah. some cream. Yeah, yeah okay. that's fine. That. Cool. I think I saw so, that lot for somebody going, no, you didn't really kill him, did you? We, we fucking did. <laughs> Look, we've got some cream to prove it. <laughs> yeah, got some cream. <laughs> so now, now you've at... got um yeah, Mojo gathering up some cream. Uh the rogues go and unleash the children. <laughs> Unleash. <laughs> Unleash the Unleash children. The children. Um, and they're they're free and they, oh, they so you know, a little, little bit kind of traumatized by what they saw unfold behind before them, but they're very grateful. They're kind of clamoring and saying, Thank you so much, thank you for freeing us from Father Johan. And they're very, very happy. And uh yes, you've now got about 40 children running around you like crazy. Yeah. Hello. Okay, Hello. Hello. Uh, the true battle Hello. begins. <laughs> Sorry, you First to off, I'm going to go use second win to go heal back <laughs> some health. So that's 1d10 plus 3. Hello. Oh, I must say, I must say, this is a lot of bloody Christmas presents we got to buy. Oh my God. Like, I've never yeah. seen so many children in my life. Yeah. I like the kids. Hello. Yeah. I like the kids. You stay away from them. <laughs> Why? Hello. <laughs> then a couple of them just kind of start saying, like, there are our parents. Can you take us take us to our parents, please? Where are we? We do not know what is going on. Yeah, we need to take them back to yeah. their family. Of yeah, course. let's go. I've got a queen. <laughs> Let's go. I managed to um, retrace your steps back to the town quite easily. Um, children are a little bit chilly because they're basically uh, in very, very little clothing. Um, a lot of what they had was taken from them when they were captured. Um, never said anything about looking for any of their belongings, so I'm assuming. <laughs> but uh, they want they wander back with you through the cold through the the bitter wind and after an hour or two you find your way back to the town where they are reunited with their families and the families are overjoyed they come rushing out of the inn as soon as one or two people spot the children coming along they call for everyone else people clamor out of their homes hug their children and are elated to say the least and uh, during all the commotion, the mayor uh, and his assistants come out and they see what's going on and they see the six of you returning back. And uh, Mayor Gruber comes up to you and says, thank you so much for returning the children. I, 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 this, is a, this is a your time miracle. I cannot believe it. Thank you so much. And then as if almost on cue, not to speed things up at all because it's almost half 12 at the morning, um, there is a light that comes from the sky and everyone stops and stares and clamors and looks up and slowly from the heavens descends the mongoose king. 
<laughs> is literally a bipedal mongoose in a suit and a top hat. And he comes down from the sky and everyone is cheering around him and they 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 are so happy to see that he's back. And the mongoose king turns to all of you and he says something in mongooses, um, which we can assume Figgy is still speaking with animals. I know the spell doesn't last this long, but we can assume it does. Sure. And what he's saying is, thank you so much for freeing me from my creamy prison. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a thank you, oh. I will grant you all one of your desires for this your time period. So one by one, he's going to ask you what you want for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with Fayad first because he's asleep. <laughs> Sleep is what I want for Christmas. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> you are now asleep forever. <laughs> <laughs> In permanent slumber. <laughs> so yes, well, tell, tell the Mongoose King what you want for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Order. And pick the order. Yeah, yeah, I've gone. So he's he's next. All right. Um, let's uh, let me close the screen firstly because we don't need that up. Um, let's yeah. let's go and anti clockwise from Fayad. Let's go claustrophobic. No, let's go Mojo. A wise man told me this that sometime in the future I meet a sudden end. This is going to take long. <laughs> Do you know what? In fact, just for that you I was about to get emotional, you fuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why we even deserve that kind of response. My, my, my wish is to return to more mortality so I can see my friends and my brother Holgarth one more time. Oh. And here's the cream. <laughs> <laughs> what? Love the cream. <laughs> It's the cream. Thanks you for the cream. And you can almost feel something change within you and you can feel yourself returning to who you once were. And you feel a change in yourself and you feel almost like you've been revitalized and you feel like a new man. Thank you. Uh, uh, claustrophobic. What would you like for Christmas? <laughs> uh, uh, a segue. <laughs> segue. <laughs> segue. <laughs> yes. Yes. Fucking oh, hanging out for a segue. <laughs> yeah. As if by magic, one appears right next to you. <laughs> yeah. Not quite one, so you have to wind it up. Yes. I was going to ask yeah. for one of those. What was that thing that we's other character had? The one that broke. The thing that broke, what was it? Oh, he, the he, abacus. He, the abacus. The mm. abacus. Yeah, I thought he was going to say, can I have a brand new mm. abacus, please? <laughs> Do a mm. character. Can you have a segue? <laughs> yeah. uh, Seto. Um, probably go back to my hometown. Um, in Feros. You can go back there um, eventually. <laughs> Well, with a snap of his fingers, there's a pop noise and you're back in your home village. Didn't even say goodbye. Okay. <laughs> yeah, time to. I just got yeah, pop. Yeah, that was quite rude, that, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Mongoose King doesn't have time for pleasantries. It's 12.25 in the morning. Figgy. No <laughs> point. I, I, see, now, do you know what, right? I was going to ask to marry the mayor, but... As you're going to make any wish come true, I've been without the man that I love for so long that I'd like to be reunited with you. Oh yes. So could you eat? Could could you be wonderful? And I know Dan will love this because we're usually going to one shot later. Could you please bring Jeff back to life? Oh God! <laughs> I need my Jeff. So again, snap, snap of his fingers, and all of a sudden, where Seto was standing, there is the one, the only <laughs> Jeff. 
<laughs> oh, thank you, dirty bitch. I mean, this is the greatest one shot of all time. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No. We brought him back. They're rolling yeah. around on the stone now. That's it. Just... But, you know, and Jeff's like please, naked. Please take him, <laughs> Jeff what, what appears naked. Play out embraces him. <laughs> You can't, awesome. he's having a snowball fight with Finny. <laughs> well, I want to see what Dave wants. Yeah, Dave, what do you want? <laughs> well, uh, that was my Uncle John, actually. I forgot his name was actually Jeff. Um, oh, no. So <laughs> Twist for granting that, that wish for me by using your wish, Figgy. I know you can't hear me because you're, you're a little bit preoccupied. Um, so uh, with my wish granted, I suppose I'd just have a coke. <laughs> and just like that, one appears in your hand. It's like a lime or anything in that way. <laughs> Why stop there? <laughs> oh, oh I had oh, a feeling no, you were gonna to... you were gonna do that just before because <laughs> I was planning on bringing. Uncle John back, who is going to be Jeff? Oh, that, 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 was, that was brilliant, Matt. That was, that was a brilliant one shot. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, that really great. was a brilliant one shot. Absolutely fantastic. Mm. Yeah, ran a that. bit longer than I thought, but yeah. Uh, unfortunately, when you when when you give me freedom, <laughs> uh, she she's not the kind of character that doesn't like talking. <laughs> hey, this is how boring playing a rogue is. Ow. I've got 33 out of 33 hit points and Fired Fired has got 44 out of 44 hit points left. <laughs> Shoot, mm. hide. Uh, the thing is, scanning, scanning back through this episode uh, over through this one shot, there's going to be so many little mini highlights like, like clips through this one. The only thing that we didn't get was a little cameo from Matt's wife. I thought we was going to get it and it was going to be complete. But we didn't get one. And she went straight to sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, when, kids, is, um, kids are sleeping at time. Is in time. Mrs. Foley straight asleep. Matt must be thinking, you know, there really is Christmas miracles happening tonight. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you, I don't, en- I don't envy women. There we go. Oh dear. <laughs> oh. I just yeah, realised no, Matt's like um, the, the younger real life version of uh, Jeff Dunham's Walter, in it. He goes, "What would you do if you go back and tell? I go back and tell my wife to leave me the hell alone." <laughs> I can't believe um, uh, Jeff is back now. Can I bring him back <laughs> to life officially? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's why I was doing it. Well, the, po- the possibility is there for my, I, I, I've missed Mojo. That, I, I love uh, Mojo. That was the well, biggest regret I had. I just it, thought he was going to irritate people. And then the other end, it just ended up being vulgar. Well, while while we're still recording, while we are still recording, um, in the future, I do plan on doing a one shot of Jeff and Figgy's wedding. So. Oh, oh no. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, yeah. Hey, there's been there's uh, a year's worth of development on this character. She, yeah. fell in, she fell in love with Jeff almost a year ago to the freaking day. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Damn. Maybe we should have the campaign, last episode of the campaign for this year next week, and then the, just have a one shot in the new year uh, when we're all back just to have their wedding. So it's literally oh, like the one, almost like one year today, and then oh, carry on the campaign. Yeah, we'll 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 do the we'll do the wedding one show in the future. That's somewhere. Yeah, man. But yeah, that'd be cool. And there you have another, um, uh, another misfit one shot Christmas special. Uh, a merry misfits Christmas. Um, thank you very much for making it to the end. That was quite long winded. I mean, it's now twenty to one in the morning. Um, but yeah, what a cracking show! And uh, yeah, I, thanks to Figgy, Jeff is now back. For those of you that have watched our one shots, Jeff was a giant pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> but thank you very much for watching. Um, Merry Christmas, and uh, until next time, take care. <laughs>